Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is the completed series of All I Want for Christmas, going from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Massive shout out to Marshmallow Muffins for the use of her beautiful stunning artwork in the thumbnail. Um, make sure you smash that like button, comment down below what you think of it and subscribe so you do not miss out on other treats and other series coming your way and Merry Christmas I'm thankful for you Marinette's POV music echoed over the water as kitty section rehearsed on the Liberty that evening several of their classmates were there as they enjoyed the music and the opportunity to hang out together Using the excuse to be there, Marinette brought along a box of cookies to share out and glimpsed Adrian playing the keyboard. She couldn't help but linger on the sight before catching Luca's eye, suddenly feeling awkward and bashful, knowing he was reading her mind and what had grabbed her attention. She darted her eyes away and bustled through the small crowd. There was still a pang of guilt when she saw Luca, how things had ended between them. Part of me wishes things could have worked out between us, she thought sadly as Mylene took a cookie from the box. But it's not as if I could tell him the truth, and yet a part of me believed he would have helped, somehow. She sighed, and then caught Alia smirking at her from around Nino's shoulder. At least she's had her bestie in her corner now, and that was helping a lot, but still... It didn't help with the feeling of being alone and isolated sometimes, all because she was a ladybug, the ultimate self-sacrifice for this calling, especially as she watched all her friends pairing off and she was left without a special someone. She couldn't help stealing another glance at Adrian. She was grateful to have her continued friendship with Luca and Adrian, plus she would always have her partner Cat Noir, the one person who might know how she was feeling. She set the cookie box to one side with a roll of her eyes. He would have jumped at the chance to be Ladybug's plus one, and yet that didn't extend to Marinette. She was destined to be just a friend to everyone. Would that even extend to Cat if he knew who she was behind the mask? As the song finished, the group clapped and cheered out words of encouragement before clustering around the box of cookies as Luca declared a five-minute break. Hey guys, a voice called from the gangplank. Sorry I'm late. Zoe stood there, smiling at the familiar greeting from the group. Is it over? Did I miss rehearsal? Luca smiled his sweet smile at her. No, we're just taking a brief break. Come aboard. Glad you could join us. Zoe blushed slightly before giving him a mock salute and joining them with a grin. Oh, cookies! Marinette smiled and held out the box to her. You always make the best cookies, Marinette. Everyone raised their cookies in agreement like a toast. That's true, Adrian replied softly. Marinette, taken by surprise at the sound of his voice, glanced behind her, knowing a blush was forming on her cheeks as he gave her a wide smile and a hint of a twinkle to his eyes. So, how is everyone going to celebrate Thanksgiving? Zoe asked. Everyone except Adrian looked at her blankly. She looked confused. Mm, Thanksgiving? A big harvest feast to celebrate friends and family and what we are thankful for? Wow, that sounds amazing, Zoe, but I'm afraid that's just an American thing. Adrian replied, we don't celebrate it here. What's it like? Rose asked dreamily. Well... I was at boarding school, so I never had a real one, she said in a barrist tone. But the movies show it having all the family and friends together, with lots of good food like roast turkey and mashed potatoes and beans and pies and all sorts of vegetables, hot cider and stuff like that. She looked wistfully down at her empty hands. I can imagine it would be easier to be thankful surrounded by all that. Marinette's heart was stirred for her new friend. Zoe looked so sad and distant, as if she never had a real family dinner, much less a chance to be thankful for the blessing of friends and family. 
In that moment, an idea crystallized in her mind, imagining the group coming together and sharing what they were grateful for and to celebrate the friendship. She was going to give Zoe a real Thanksgiving. After all, she was part of their family now and they were thankful for her. This was an opportunity to welcome her properly and give her something by the looks of it she had always wanted. The next issue was how she was going to pull it off. One by one, the band finished up their snacks and headed back to the platform as Alia sat down next to Marinette, who already had her notebook out, was making a list of what it would involve to pull it off. Alia stared at her, inspecting the expression and the fury of scribbling her bestie was doing. I know that look, girl, she murmured as the band started playing again. So, what over-the-top idea do you have this time? I want to give Zoe a Thanksgiving, Marinette whispered, doing a quick search on her phone for traditional Thanksgiving dishes and decorations. What she had described before sounds amazing. Plus, after everything Chloe and her mom have put her through since she got here, she kind of deserves to know that we care and that she has us now. You have a heart of gold, you know that, right? Alia wrapped her arms around her shoulders in a hug. She gave a one-sided shrug. I just think it would be good for everyone and be a nice thing to do for all of us. You want to help? Any excuse for a party? What do you need? The two of them spent the rest of the jam session researching the American holiday and figuring out the details. The other packed up and headed home when Luca, Adrian, Ivan and Mylene came over to them. What tune are you planning now, Mama Marinette? Luca said with a teasing tilt to his voice. She blushed at him, pretending to stutter over her name. Not so much a tune, but more like a menu? Hey, if you're baking, then I'm down to help, said Adrian, his eyes bright. Alia touched his shoulder. I told you, Marinette, true cupboard love. She felt her cheeks burn scarlet, but Adrian just smiled at her friend. Come on, Alia, Marinette knows I like her for more than just her baking skills. Really? Alia quipped, leaning towards him and staring at him over the top of her glasses. Like her how, aggress. Inquiring minds want to know. Marinette's eyes widened. Was Adrian really saying he liked her? As in, like liked her? Or the usual like? Oh, ginger snaps. This couldn't be happening, could it? Adrian ran a hand over the back of his neck, an unconscious habit he did when nervous or embarrassed, keeping his head down but darting his gaze upwards towards her face. Well, she's kind and talented and she's... A real good friend? The three others rattled out the worn-out phrase in unison, leaving Marinette to blush so hard she was sure that her cheeks were passing out of the visible spectrum. Adrian looked at the others, then at her, and a slight pinkish tint touched his cheeks. <laughs> I guess I said that before, huh? A lot, the others replied, and they all chuckled in his confusion. He awkwardly moved three steps and was now standing close to her. Well, Marinette is a great friend, he said defensively, putting an arm around her shoulder. I don't see what's so funny about that. She stood frozen, staring at his hand on her shoulder, as if it was a snake, and if she moved, it would bite her. So, did that mean he still only saw her just as a friend, or was he admitting to more? She wouldn't dare look up at him, fearing the answer might be sketched onto his face. Instead, she glanced around the group who were mocking Adrian with blatant expressions, apart from Luca, who was reading hers with a bittersweet smile on his face. Oh, blast. How did I get into this mess? There are friends and there are friends, Alia declared, smirking at him suggestively. Where does my girl fall, sunshine? Marinette wanted to shout at her bestie to stop what she was doing, embarrassing Adrian like this, who was clearly unaware of what kind of feelings he still had towards her. However, experience had taught her that only caused more awkwardness for all involved. He just stared at her, 
confusion in his eyes and a scarlet blush growing more pronounced across his handsome features. He removed his arm from my shoulder and used it to rub the back of his neck, sensing the strange atmosphere forming between the group. If there had even been the slightest chance of him liking her, then she was sure now it had gone. Could it out, Alia? She muttered under her breath, but her best friend ignored her. When it was clear that Adrian wasn't going to confess to how he felt and that Alia would not back down, Ivan of all people intervened. The giant teddy bear of a boy stepped over and pulled Marinette over to him, and Mylene into a big huddle, breaking the tableau between the friends and crush an ex-boyfriend. I think we should let Marinette finish what she was saying, said the gentle giant, patting her slightly on the head to let her know that he and Mylene understood her unease. What's the plan, Marinette? Thanks, Ivan. She stammered, trying to ignore the other three and focus on her notebook. Zoe mentioned that she had never had a Thanksgiving with friends and family before. I thought since we all kind of adopted her that it would be neat to set one up for her. You know, invite the entire class and Kitty section could play some music and we can all have dinner together. Let her know she's not alone. The other conversation had stopped. Instead, they were all looking at her. That's a great idea, Marinette, Adrian said sweetly, moving closer to her again. What do we need to get started? She darted her eyes at him and regretted it when she saw the smile and knew her cheeks were giving her away again. Well, we'd need somewhere to hold this meal. Any ideas? What about the hotel? Alia suggested. We know the mayor is her stepdad and he likes her a lot. Maybe he could help. True, but if Chloe and her mom got word of this, they would shut it down out of spite. Mylene sighed. So the hotel is probably out. I would offer to use my house as we have a massive dining room that would be perfect for it, but I don't think my father would welcome that amount of people. Especially my school friends in the house, even if it was for Zoe. I'm sorry. Adrian sounded a little disappointed. Without thinking, Marinette placed a hand on his arm as a comfort. That's all right, Adrian. We understand. And wouldn't want to impose. He placed his hand on top of hers. Thanks, he whispered. Marinette noticed everyone looking at them both and where their hands were. Caving into the pressure and not wanting to overstep, she scolded herself as she slid her hand out of his grip and drifted her gaze back towards her notebook. Well, I was kind of had the another idea. Why not here? She flipped the pages and scanned through the initial drawings she had made whilst the music had been playing. I mean, if it's okay with you two and your mom. She quickly glanced up at Luca, who was smiling at her drawings, and Julica, who was nodding her head. I think your designs and ideas are wonderful, Marinette, and we would be more than happy to host it. Luca beamed at her. Great! So I was thinking, since we already have the stage, we could get some tables and chairs? I know a great catering company we can use. Natalie uses them all the time for events. I could reach out to them and see if we can loan some added in Adrian. That's an amazing idea, Adrian. Thank you. This time she glanced in his direction, but avoided his eyes, but felt a hand on his shoulder, causing her heart to quicken. So, if we had a long row of tables, and above we could stretch out some form of cover, whilst underneath string some fairy lights, which would create this magical glow, onto the feast. As for the food, if everyone is willing to share out the jobs, I mean... I would do the turkey using our big ovens and my parents will probably make some desserts. Like we did for Heroes Day, but on a bigger scale, said Alia, giving Marinette an approving nod to this suggestion. She ran her pencil over the list of jobs they needed to complete and couldn't help but let out a small sigh under her breath. Exactly like that. But we only have five days to pull it off. Don't worry. She felt Adrian giving her shoulders a light squeeze. We've got this. We can do it, no problem. Especially when we all work together. 
added Rose in her usual upbeat tone and drew liquor agreeing. Yeah, no problem, Marinette. You tell us the jobs that need doing, and we'll tell you which ones we can do, Alia said, glancing down at the list that she already compiled. Refocusing her thoughts, Marinette sat down at the table, with Adrian sitting next to her, and spent the next five to ten minutes adding and taking away from the long list. She couldn't believe how natural it felt, bouncing ideas off him, as he told her of his limited experience of being in America on a few visits, and what he had picked up on traditionals when he was there. Whilst their friends dipped in and out, the conversation picking out a few items they could take care of, leaving only a handful left on the list. I can help you take care of the last items on the list if you like. His phone buzzed in his pocket. Marinette guessed it was his driver informing him it was time, as he glanced to the riverbank whilst he grumbled underneath his breath and rose to his feet. I need to go, but... We could tackle some of the jobs after school if you like. Tomorrow? She mirrored his movements, caught in his gaze. Yeah, sure. If you have the time, that is. For you and this amazing gesture you're putting together for all of us? Always. Thank you for your help. She could feel the blush returning to her cheeks from his soft stare. Would you like a lift home and we can... His phone buzzed again as he rolled his eyes and sighed. You had better go. I still have some things to go over here before I do. Thanks again. And I'll see you at school tomorrow. Yeah, sure. She could swear there was a hint of disappointment washed over his face. Oh, blast. I'll see you tomorrow. A half smile returned to his face before waving bye to the rest of the group as they called out their farewells to him. Marinette planted herself back down, remembering a few more things she could take care of and writing them on her list, distracting herself from staring at Adrian leaving and the million of questions which were squealing inside her head. They were for later in front of Tiki and the biggest cookie she could get her hands on and process it all. Girl, what was that? With Adrian? Why didn't you take him up on the offer? Alia sat next to her and muttered under her breath and away from the darting eyes, one of which had been Luca. He was helping me since he had more knowledge than any of us about American traditions. And it's true. I still need to take measurements and... She caught Alia's judging gaze and paused. It would only be a two-minute drive where we had small talk and said bye as I climbed out. And it wasn't a lie I need. I needed a moment after, she gestured where they'd been sitting. And he has offered to help after school, if he has the time. So what if it's still as friends and I don't want to get my hopes up again? You know what I mean? I hear you, girl, and a two-minute drive won't make or break it, but I have to say, his look of disappointment was priceless and not suggesting friendship. That's all I'm saying, but at your speed. Oh, look at that. A snail just whizzed past the both of you. Marinette let out a groan at a friend as she returned... Marinette let out a groan at a friend as she returned it with a wide grin and a knowing look. Marinette spent the evening watching some sort of American TV film that was fluffy and romantic, but based around Thanksgiving to give her a sense of what it should be like. Whilst gathering pieces of fabric together to sew a festive table runner, adding elements with scraps of golden fabric as leaves on a long piece of crimson fabric. The decoration styles seemed to be a blend of autumn and Christmas, whilst the food reminded her more of a British European style Christmas feast, the more she looked into it and the different theories behind it, the more complicated it became. Instead, she merely wanted to focus on the theme of giving thanks and being grateful for what she has regarding friends and family. The beautiful gift of coming together, plus any excuse to have a crafting project, which, if Adrian was still willing to help her, would be their project after school. Since the actual day wasn't a holiday in France, they decided they would hold the meal on the Saturday. That way everyone could join with the bonus of more time. 
She landed at school slightly earlier than normal for her. Having a new project to focus on helped to bring back a spring to her step, or maybe it was a lingering warmth left over from last night's film. That was until she saw Adrian climb out of his car and made his way over to her smiling. Butterflies took flight at the sudden nervous thoughts at bringing up the project of her joining her after school. Or maybe she should leave it for him to say something. That way he could back out of it. Hey, Marinette. Nice surprise finding you waiting on the steps before school. N not that you're normally late or anything. I mean, sometimes you are, but... The confidence he started off the conversation with drifted away from him as a cute blush formed on his cheeks. She had never noticed him do that before. Words were lost on her as he leaned in a little closer, dropping his voice down to a whisper. So, have you had any more thoughts on the Friendsgiving gathering? The confidence returned as he threw her a smirk to go alongside his pun. Friendsgiving? I like that. She smiled at him but quickly darted her gaze away, looking like she was searching for Alia and Nino, when in fact, the casual conversation wouldn't last much longer if she had to keep staring into his sparkling emerald eyes. I was working on some decoration pieces last night, but I need to head to the craft store after school, if you are still... Yes! I mean, yeah, that would be fun. I told Natalie that I was working on a project after school, and in a way, I kind of am. He grinned at her, stunning her with how excited he was. Cool. Cool, cool, she said, the words growing in pitch as all the other words had exited her mouth. Well, I was thinking a tree, but it's not a tree, but it would need time to dry before or we could paint it. That makes little sense, doesn't it? I have sketches I can show you in class. I'm sure with you designing it, the tree will be amazing. Without her realising, Adrian had taken a step closer and was now angled towards her and his hand had moved back into the same position as yesterday evening. She took a deep breath. Yes, but we still have to make it first. She teased, noticing a bit of a ladybug was showing and saw him raise an eyebrow at her. Girl, wow, am I seeing things. Marinette, waiting for moi? Alia called out at the bottom of the steps and threw Marinette a loaded look when she saw the interaction between the two. Morning, my dudes, Nina greeted and then wrapped an arm around Alia, kissing her on the cheek, the usual morning greeting. Marinette couldn't help feeling awkward and jealous, but this morning she was grateful for the small steps with Adrian that might one day it lead to what her friends have. As they turned to move, head into the lockers, she felt Adrian's hand slide off her shoulder and down her arm a little, as if he was about to take her hand. Her breath caught in her chest, nothing. Instead, he dashed forward and held the door open for the group and a rosy colour in his cheeks. Before she knew it, they were preparing to pack up for the day as Adrian turned round and faced Marinette. So, where are we heading first? Did you see the craft store? A wide smile shone across his face. Oh, yeah, craft store first, but we might have to do some sneaky scavenging, if you're up for it. She gave him a little smirk and a challenging gaze, taking him by surprise along with Ali and Nino. That sounds intriguing. Alia shot Marinette a stare, which she threw right back. Yeah, I mean, I'm up for some scavenging. Adrian shifted his eyes to his bag, placing the last of the books inside when the school bell called out. Great, I made a list of what we need. Marinette felt strangely confident and she was going to roll with it. No more second guesses. He had chosen to hang out with you. They did the usual bye as Alia and Nino took off in the opposite direction, but she felt her phone buzz in her pocket. Alia, make sure you call me afterwards. Marinette let out a small chuckle and then jumped at Adrian's voice right beside her. What's so funny? What? 
Within seconds, the confident walking marionette was gone and the clumsy version had returned. Tripping over her own feet, she lunged forward but felt Adrian's hand reach out and grab hers, giving her the much-needed balance. Sorry, thanks. Don't know what happened there. Her gaze followed his, staring at their hands clamped together, their fingers woven together, snuggling against her sleeves of her woolly jumper. The same sunshine smile broke through and felt his hand squeeze hers, holding them tighter instead of letting go, encouraging her forward. Her mind buffered for a few minutes, acting on autopilot. He was holding her hand. He was choosing to hold her hand. It felt good. No, amazing to have this continued link between them. They arrived at the craft store and realised she would need to drop his hand for the list, regret already forming inside her gut. She gave Adrian a small grin as her hand slipped out of his, quickly reaching into her bag and produced a list, making sure he noticed. He chuckled. What's the first thing on the list, Marinette? We need chicken wire, PVA, gesso, white acrylic paint. I have enough black paint. Oh, we need florist wire. Marinette. He leaned in a little closer, his eyebrows raised. What are we making exactly? I didn't show you the design, did I? We're going to make a thankful tree. She handed in the list while she grabbed a sketchbook out of her bag, flipping the pages until she reached the design of the tree you would see in a Tim Burton film with a magical edge, not creepy. Wow, we are going to make that? Yeah, at least try. It will take over one afternoon, waiting for the layers to dry, so it depends. I know you're busy with other things and I'm really grateful for your help to start with it. I'm in, all week if you need me. I'm not going to let you down. I'm excited to do this. But can I ask, what are those? He pointed to the elements hanging off the trees. Oh, we need brown paper. Parcel paper would do. Oh, and bronze liquid, yeah. So they are leaves we will create and people can take one and write something they are thankful for and then attach it to the tree. She could feel the heat in her cheeks and cast a gaze down, suddenly nervous at the thought he might think her idea foolish. Marinette, that is a wonderful idea. You are really thoughtful, he said with such tenderness, forcing her eyes up and met his soft gaze. Oh, wow, that look made her feel like she was floating on air. Did he even realise he was doing that to her heart? Her mouth became dry, words sticking to her tongue, and all she could do was nod. If you could get the chicken wire, I'll get the painting supplies. She chuckled at his lost stare as he glanced around the store. It's over there. Meet you back in five? Great! He dashed off, glancing back a few times as Marinette scanned the aisles, placing extra items into her basket. After they had three large bags filled with goodies, Marinette turned around to Adrian. So, about the scavenger part of the mission, she could tell a hint of Ladybug was showing. We need some wood and nails, items to construct the base of the tree before we mould the form around it. How does the scavenger part come into it? He raised his eyebrows, intrigued by the next part of her plan. Well, there's a scrapyard hidden amongst the city, owned by Louis. He's an old friend of Papa's and lets me come and have a look around for things I can make things from now and again. So I was thinking Louis might have what we need. Wow, I had no idea. But I do love a good treasure hunt. They rounded the corner and down a couple of streets until Marinette stopped at two large wooden gates with a small brass bell hanging on the side. After a few minutes, a small door concealed in the large one opened with a head popping out. Louis's eyes widened at the sight of Marinette and boomed out, Welcome! 
while the head was replaced with a hand beckoning them in. Marinette gave Adrian a playful smile as she stepped over the wooden lip and stepped into the vast cave of wonders. She had guessed the place used to be stables to house the city horses, with a cobbled courtyard leading into an L-shaped structure brimming with organised treasures. She glanced back and watched as Adrian's eyes widened at the view. It's not what you expect, is it? You were the first person I've brought here. Now my secret is also yours to keep. I'm honoured, Marinette, that you should trust me with such a secret. Wow. I could spend hours here. She giggled at Adrian's childlike grin forming on his face. Louis, who looked at least ten years older than her papa, stepped out from one of the various doors at the edge of the courtyard, wiping his hands across his filthy apron before brushing his nails against his short silver beard. Marinette, what do I owe for the pleasure? Is there some new project on hand? Hello, Louis. This is my friend, Adrian. It felt kind of good to use it back on him, but she didn't dare glance around to see his face. Yes, and you know me too well. I need some planks of wood and nails. You see, I'm making this. She pulled out a sketchbook and flipped to a more mechanical drawing. Oh, I see. What's it going to be? When we are finished, it will be a thankful tree, but we need to make the base first. We are organising a gathering, a Thanksgiving-inspired one for friends and family. You should come. Papa and Mama will be there. It's on Saturday. Thank you. I will give it some thought. As for your thankful tree, I, I think I have just what you need. Come this way. Louis suggested for her to follow through the stable door. Do you want to have a look around whilst I gather what we need? She felt like she was talking to Maman at a toy shop, who was ready to sprint off to explore at that second. If that's okay, that would be amazing. Yeah, we shouldn't be that long, she grinned at his sunshine smile. Twenty minutes had passed and they touched base with each other a few times, checking each one was alright. Louis had cut the wood to size and even made it simple for Marinette to construct once they were back in her room. Marinette, please promise me you'll bring me back here again soon. That wasn't long enough. Thank you. He was giving her that soft stare which made her insides melt. Sure, I thought you'd like it. She handed him the bundle Louis had wrapped up for her. Thank you, Louis. How much do I owe you? Oh, I think attending this Thanksgiving will be payment enough. I want to see the final product. Thank you, they both said as one as they climbed back through the small door laden with their treasures and headed back towards the bakery. With the help of her papa, they carried everything into her room and laid everything out in front of them. Louis had given her the flat base to slot the trunk of the tree onto, and then they had to fix on the three arms to the trunk with wooden pegs and a lot of wood glue. Marinette giggled as Adrian crouched down and looked like he was performing Twister with the tree as he held the branches in place. Marinette laid out the rest of the materials, configuring how each step would take. I don't think we can do any more this evening, I think we need to let it dry before we do the next part. I mean, if you can help tomorrow, if you can't, I understand. She purposely glanced away and picked up one of the golden leaves she was sewing onto the table runner, so not to see his conflicted gaze. I'll be here! His loud, excited voice took her off guard, grabbing her attention. I want to help, and now that we have started this project, I want to see it through. I'm excited. I've done nothing like this before. He slowly crept away from the makeshift tree in the centre of the room and made his way over to her. Plus, I really enjoyed this afternoon with you, Marinette. His voice was softer, quieter now. I haven't had this much fun in a long while. We make a good team. We do, don't we? I've had lots of fun too. She could feel the beaming smile stretching across her face. It's nice to do this with someone, to share it with you. 
She stared at the leaf, knowing there was a flush in her cheeks. What have you got there? His hands brushed against hers as she handed him the leaf to look at and saw a little pink in his face. Is this what you mentioned? What you made last night? Yeah, I had some fabric, so I made a table runner. I saw it featured in some images I searched through. She picked up the long folded fabric and flipped it out, exposing the shimmering golds against the reds. Wow, Marinette, that's stunning. You really have a gift for designing and making. I'm in awe of your talent. I sometimes wish I could be as creative as you. But you are. I think you just need a bit more practice and confidence. You never know, you might find you have a calling for making oversized thankful trees by the time we are finished. They both laughed. But all honesty, I don't think you give yourself enough credit sometimes, Adrian. She added, the soft stare returned to his face. His phone buzzed and broke the new binding between them. He took it out of his pocket and glared at the message. It's Natalie, saying the car will pick me up in five minutes to take me back. Marinette offered to walk him down to the side door and onto the now dark, wintry street. Thank you again for all your help, Adrian, and tomorrow comes the messy part. I look forward to it, the car pulled up to them. I'll see you in school tomorrow. Adrian did a halfway as he disappeared inside. Over the next couple of days, Adrian and Marinette spent their time during class to discuss ideas on what they would do with the tree and after school worked on the next part. They placed a chicken wire frame around the wood before covering it with paper mache, making jokes when they came across one of his ads and covering it with paste. The following afternoon, they added the base colour and watched as the tree transformed in front of them. After Adrian had to leave, Marinette sat for hours watching another feel-good film and cut out leaves for the people to leave their messages on. On their fourth afternoon together, all of Marinette's nerves with Adrian had disappeared and felt relaxed in his company to the point of flirtatious at points. But nothing more. And yet... She found herself even grateful for that. Their relationship, whatever it was becoming, was blossoming much like the tree. They were painting on the details and hadn't been doing it for long when Adrian got a message and by the look on his face, he wasn't happy. What's wrong? Is everything okay? She kept a gaze on the silver paint, blending it in with the grey going up the trunk. It's Natalie. Said father wants me home, as I've been missing too many of my studies this week, and I need to catch up. That's okay, I can finish it. No, it's not okay, but I need to keep him happy so I get to attend the gathering on Saturday, he moaned whilst he gathered up his things. She didn't know what to say. He'd been hinting more as they chatted for hours about how life at home could be difficult at times. Another thing she was grateful for were her own parents. Do you think you'll be able to help tomorrow with the setting up? I don't know. I'll try. I really want to stay longer and help. Adrian, you've helped me more than I could say. I'm thankful for the time we've had and the past few days. She gave him a cheeky smile and saw one forming on his lips. Marinette? He stepped closer to her and took her hand in his. I'm thankful for... His phone buzzed and the smile faded slightly on his face before darting his gaze at her. Letting me help you and doing this together. His hand let go of hers and grabbed for his phone. My driver is here. I'll see myself out. I'll see you at school tomorrow? Yeah, I'll see you at school. She replied as he slipped through the hatch and out of her bedroom. She spent the rest of the evening jumping from adding more details to the tree, letting the paint dry and creating more leaves with the additional help from the Kwamis, drifting around the room, bringing her things and giving their own touches of magic to the look of the tree, especially from Tiki. This is going to be amazing when you finish, Marinette. Who knew how well you and Adrian work well together? I can't believe these past few days have happened. 
to spend so much time together, just the two of us. I haven't been a mess in front of him. It's been like a dream. She paused, staring at the leaf in her hand. This might sound strange. I love him, and I thought of myself as his friend, but doing this together, the project, is like I've seen another side to Adrian. He has been more playful, open. We've talked so much that he's gotten to the point we don't need words. We already know what the other is about to do. Does that make sense? Like you and Kat during the Kuma battles? I suppose a bit, but we have worked together for longer. It's different. Our relationship is different. Is it? Tiki squeaked. She hadn't noticed a knocking on her window at first, and then she glanced up and saw Kat at her window. Panic instantly hit her as she quickly glanced around, making sure that none of her little ones were about before focusing back towards a playful, smirking grin at her window. She threw him a questioning look, resulting in his grin becoming wider as she climbed up to her bed and opened the skylight. The crisp night air hit her in the face, clearing away any tired fogginess. Kitty, what brings you to my window on such a frosty night? Come in and get warm. Hello, princess. I was drawn to your light and wondered what you were up to. Call it my inner cat curiosity. He jumped down and shut the window behind him. She couldn't help but giggle at his wiggling eyebrows and welcome the distraction of her partner, even though it was strange for him to be wandering across the rooftops in this chilly weather. Well, I've been busy with a project with one of my good friends. Come and see. She climbed back down the ladder and gestured for him to follow. Wow, that looks amazing. Is that a tree? Yeah, it's a thankful tree. Inspired by the look of a silver birch, but using golden leaves. She passed him the leaf she had just made. See, people are going to write a message on the leaf to express what they are thankful for and then hang it on like so. She showed him with another leaf, which had a piece of a hooked forest wire placed through it and hung it from one of the branches. Kat was silent, causing her to become bashful. Do you think people will like it? Adrian and myself have put a lot of time and love into it. Do you think it's silly? She made to take the leaf off, but Kat placed his gloved hand over hers. No! Sorry. Seeing it with the leaf on it? It's wonderful. You are wonderful. For coming up with the idea, I mean. As if suddenly aware he was holding her hand, Cat let go, turning his attention to the leaf he was holding. Thank you, Kitty. That means the world. You should come. We are having a gathering of friends and family. A form of thanksgiving for a new addition to the family, Zoe. And, well, you're part of the family too. So you should come. It's on Saturday. She gently placed her hand on his arm and received a warm smile, glancing from her hand to her face. There is no one else like you, Marinette, my princess, with such a loving heart. Without her even realising, he was stroking her cheek with his gloved fingers and held a gaze that caught her by surprise. It reminded her of the melting look she had received a few times from Adrian over the past couple of days. And then, as if realising what he was doing, his hand dropped to his side and took a step back. May I? He held the leaf up. Can I be the first to leave a message? Does that mean you aren't coming? She said with a hint of disappointment. I will if I can. But I would like to be the first, if that's okay with you. He took a seat at her desk and picked out a pen. She hovered next to him, not sure if she could take a look at what he was writing. After five minutes, he stood back up, grabbing a hook and placed the leaf on the tree. I better be going. He stood awkwardly for a moment. She could tell he was torn with wanting to stay. The thought brought a smile to her lips. You know you're welcome at my window any time, Kitty, if you need to talk. And I hope you can pop by on Saturday. It's on the Liberty ship. 
he bounced back and forth from the balls of his feet like he was unsure of the next step he wanted to take. Giving her a bashful smile, he nodded his head and said softly, Sweet dreams, princess. He climbed her ladder and was out the window, disappearing back into the black of the night. Once Marinette was alone again, she picked up the leaf and read, I'm thankful for my princess in her tower, whose light shines in the dark and holds a magical heart which has healed my world, signed with a black paw. She felt herself blushing at his words and carefully placed the leaf back on its spot. Oh, Kitty. The morning of the small party had arrived. They had five hours to get the space ready before more of the class arrived and any additional families and friends. Marinette had her papa help transport the tree, taking a clear step back at all points as he lifted it in and out of the delivery van. The last thing she wanted to do was to stumble and break all the hard work. Wow, girl! Is this the secret project you and Adrian have been working on? Hidden away up there in your room? Yes, it's a thankful tree, and I would be thankful if you didn't give me that look. What? I'm just saying, who would have thought the two of you finally? You know nothing like that happened. There was no kiss or declaring love. You mean to tell me you spent all that time with him to the point that you no longer look like a complete mess in front of him? Said with love, but it's true. And yet, you still didn't tell him your feelings? Why not? Marinette gestured for Alia to drop her voice. She didn't want to receive everyone else's opinion on the matter. It wasn't like that. Yes, there was some flirting, but instead I focused on spending time with him, really getting to know him. And I hate to use the word, but being his friend. Marinette giggled as Alia's eyebrows shot up while her mouth hung open. It's funny. I think I have a deeper love for him, but if all he wanted was to be my friend, like we have been over the past few days for now... I think I would be okay with that. Do you know what I mean? No, that makes no sense. You need to tell the boy how you feel, especially now he has gotten to know the marinette we all know and love and forever thankful for. I think you might be surprised by his answer. Alia left her friend to ponder her words while she went and helped Nino string millions of fairy lights around the ship. Bit by bit, through the morning, the deck of the ship transformed into magical space. The table and chairs Adrian had organised turned up and formed a long line from one side to the other. Marinette spent an hour dressing it like a model. The runner was like the dress, popping under the golden light, and made sure every tiny detail was perfect before it was ordained by the audience. Adrian Father says I can leave in 30 minutes once he has approved something and Natalie to confirm I've completed my tasks. I promise to be there soon. Sorry again. Marinette. We have it under control. You get here when you can. And stop saying sorry. Smiley face. Kiss. Sorry. Will you send me a picture of how it looks? I don't think I can wait. Sorry. But no. LOL. You will just have to wait and be thankful for patience. Adrian. I'm thankful for... Kiss. Marinette! Come here and give me a hand with this. She couldn't stop grinning as she placed her phone back into her pocket and helped to hold a piece of fabric up to guard against the side breeze. We could do with having Luca here for his height but he is helping to keep Zoe distracted until the surprise. I forgot to check. Are you alright with them? Together? They seem to be hanging out more often these days. It's kind of strange, but they make sense together and Zoe can give Luca something I can't at the moment. Time and heart. I will never step in the way of him being happy and I think he feels the same way about me too. So, what about the other tall one? Where is Sunshine Boy? He messaged and said he would be here in 30 minutes. 
I hope so, as Zoe is due in an hour and people will arrive soon with food. My folks are bringing the turkey and three trays of desserts. Is your mum still bringing her famous dish? Alia looked at the time on her phone. Yep, and the whole family should be here soon. I want to say thanks again for this. It's pretty special. I only thought of the idea. We only pulled it off because we worked as a team and did it together. Well, either way, I'm thankful. They both chuckled as they tied off the canvas. Over the next hour, family and friends arrived, bringing with them food and drinks and treats to add to the overflowing table as delicious blends of smells and sounds of joy filled the ship. Marinette! The tree! She turned round to see Adrian bounding towards her and wrapped his arms around her, placing a kiss on her cheek. It's amazing to see it under the light and it already has 20 leaves hanging off it and your artistry and the finishing touches. It has been one of the best things I've ever done. Noticing he still had a hold on her in a tight embrace, he lowered her back down but still remained close. We did a great job and I really enjoyed making it with you. So, have you placed your leaf on the tree yet? Know what you are thankful for? Suddenly feeling nervous, Marinette fiddled with her fingers, casting a gaze from his eyes to her hands. Adrian placed his over hers whilst holding onto a leaf. He slowly uncurled her fingers and placed the leaf inside. Dude, can I grab you for a second? Nino shouted over to them both. Adrian said nothing, but smiled at her, with a twinkle in his eyes before disappearing back through the crowd. Frozen on the spot, all the thoughts dispersed from her mind as her hands unfolded and the gold shone through. Turning it over, she saw one line in his writing. I'm thankful for you. What did that mean? What was he saying? Her heart was yelling out the answer was of love, but her head repeated the same line of friendship. She needed to speak to him, ask him once and for all. She heard a loud cheer erupt around her and saw Zoe and Luca approach the ship and place the leaf in her bag. That will have to wait until later. Happy thankful day, everyone called out. Girl, come on! Marinette threw her friend a questioning look as Alia tugged her to the front of the group. You're going to say some words. No, I'm not. Alia, I can't suddenly do a speech in front of everyone. Just say a few words. She shoved Marinette forward as Nino handed her a mic as she handed him a glare. Welcome everyone to Thankful Day, our version of Thanksgiving, inspired and done for our dear friend Zoe and how thankful we are having her here. As her sight left Zoe's blushing face and scanned the crowd, she caught sight of Adrian who was beaming at her and his note calling out from her purse. She had to look away, sensing the colour in her cheeks rising and scared that she would fumble over her words. So, please enjoy yourselves with good company. There is plenty of food and take a moment to leave a leaf on the thankful tree, expressing what you are most thankful for. Thank you. Another cheer filled the space as she stepped down from the stage. Zoe dashed towards her. I can't believe you organised all this after I'd mentioned it last weekend. Thank you. Well... You're part of our family now, and I, we, wanted to show you and others how much you matter. I know it's not traditional, it's so much better. It's me, and it's you, and it's all of us blended together. I never realised that I could call Paris home, but you, all of you, have shown me I'm a part of something here. Something I never had before, so... Thank you, every one of you, Zoe said, her gaze landing on each of their friends who were gathering around them. 
Rose was the first to hug Zoe, followed by Mylene and Ivan, until all the friends were gathered into one mass. Marinette beamed at Alia on one side of her and turned to see Adrian slipping his arm around her on the other side, joining the embrace. She felt herself blush as a hand wrapped around his waist as he pulled her in a little tighter to whisper into her ear. Did you hang my leaf on our tree? I meant every word, but I want to know. What are you thankful for, Marinette? Part 1. Adrian, Kat, POV. Adrian paced around his room, replaying the conversation he'd had with Marinette the day before at the thankful celebration. None of it had gone to plan. He had rehearsed what he was going to say to her in the morning as he was forced to play the same tune on the piano over and over. He had given her the leaf, declaring she was the one he was thankful for. That had been clear, hadn't it? Then why did it feel muddled and confusing when she looked at him and said she was thankful for him too? What had she meant by that? Was it the same as him? Or was it merely as friends? But then, their friends had interrupted them, diverting them away from their conversation. Had she not realised what he meant by the leaf and his growing feelings towards her? He had wanted to take her to one side and explain how much he had loved spending their time together over the past week. Making that tree, watching it grow, had confirmed his own blossoming feelings towards Marinette. And yet, as they danced once before his father had ordered him home, the words had failed him again. Lost in her blushes, forming across her cheeks as he held her close, swaying to the music like they had done twice before, knowing now how much this moment meant to him and he never wanted to let her go. It was strange how different this felt. He would always love Ladybug, but recently he had realised he was no longer in love with her. He had placed his partner on this perfect pedestal, but in reality... He didn't know her, not when she kept him at arm's length. And yet, it had been easier than he thought it would have been to let her go, to focus on being her friend and her partner. The more he took a step back from Ladybug, the more he seemed to open up to the possibility of how he felt towards Marinette, and how his feelings towards his princess had crept up on him. But this past week, spending time with her unlike he had done with anyone else, to the point she had become comfortable with him, working together, and those moments his hands brushed against hers, or the sound of her laughter after he told a terrible joke, the excitement surged inside of him. But what if all she saw was a friend? She hadn't suggested any feelings towards him or picked up on him flirting with her during the afternoons. Kid, why don't you just ask Bakery Girl if she likes you and then tell her how you feel? Plague, it's not that simple. Adrian stared at the silver tree which now stood in his bedroom with bare branches except for a single leaf with Marinette's handwriting on it. Why do humans have to make everything so complicated? You like her, tell her. And what if she says no? Then I risk spoiling a special friendship. And what if she says yes, kid? But you don't know that unless you ask. Adrian could tell Plague was getting frustrated with his continuing pacing across the room as well as in the conversation. Oh no, I know that look. If Kat asked her, then I would know without risking our friendship. Oh, make it more complicated than it needed to be, Plague muttered to himself, throwing another chunk of cheese down his open mouth. In 
less than a month it'll be Christmas and how amazing would it be if Marinette was my Christmas wish come true. How lucky he would be to have such a thoughtful, creative, amazing person want to be with him. If she returned his feelings, filling him with a warm sensation he'd never felt for anyone else. Not even Ladybug. Plague swallowed two more mouthfuls of cheese, one straight after the other, and then flew in front of Adrian, waving his tiny arms back and forth to gain his attention. Go on then, say the words. Adrian chuckled as his little Kwame rolled his eyes at him. Plague? Claws out. He jumped out of his room. The blissful sensation of the chill hitting your face after the warmth of being indoors helped to clear his thoughts. It was earlier than he would normally take to the rooftops, but now that the nights were drawing in, day by day producing less hours of daylight, he was managing to get out earlier. The stars barely broke through the clouds which had covered the streets in that rain sleet, one or two degrees too warm for it to be transformed into snow. He found the joy in his heart was emitted out of his legs as his running had almost turned into a skip. Around in the corner as he approached the bakery, the nerves started to bubble inside of him. It had only been three nights since he was last here, and felt the same temptation stir inside of him to spend that extra time with her. He had told himself off that night, after leaving the message on the leaf, but it had been the closest he had gotten to express his feelings to her. Oh, how much he had meant every word. Marinette, for Kitty, had become a princess in her tower. She shone a light that was able to disperse this darkened times, creating magical moments which had helped to heal him when he had thought no one could have broken through his spiralling low moments. And yet, Cat wasn't allowed to express those feelings. It made more sense for Adrian to date Marinette than a superhero, and yet... Only this cat was able to get the words out. A sweet sound called out, beckoning closer like a beam guiding him home. He heard the transition from one song ending, giving away to the sounds of Christmas bells, and then a warm voice carried across to him through the icy wind and noticed it was coming from his princess. She was standing amidst a string of fairy lights, becoming tangled as she sang out the lyrics. Emphasising the meaning of each word, each sentence, like they were a Christmas wish she was sending to Santa. It added a different meaning to the familiar words, as she swayed her hips back and forth as a tempo for the slow opening verse of the song, All I Want for Christmas. I don't want a lot for Christmas, there is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own, more than you will ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is... She paused, glancing around her. Hello, Kitty. The simple backing track continued to emit out of the speaker she had placed on a small table, suggesting the next part of the lyrics, and yet refused to be sang, cutting her off her Christmas wish and expressing her heart's desire. He hadn't noticed jumping across the rooftops. All he had been aware of was her sweet, enduring voice. He wanted to hear more. Princess, why did you stop? Please continue. He landed on the railings and watched her startled expression shift to embarrassment as her cheeks turned to a crimson colour even in the low glow of the fairy lights held in her hands. I'm sorry, Kitty, but I, I don't do requests nor an audience. If I had known you were listening... She turned her back on him and he could hear her take a deep breath and his heart melted for her. That's a shame. Maybe one day he could maybe persuade her to finish the song as he played out the tune on the piano. Can I ask? 
It kind of sounded like you were sending out a Christmas wish. What does my princess want for Christmas? Could he dare hope? Would he be lucky enough to hope it might be linked to what he wanted most for Christmas? Oh, that would be telling now, wouldn't it? Not that it will come true. I've been wishing for the same thing for the past couple of years, but my wish seems to go unnoticed. I did start to think maybe this year would be different. I don't know. Maybe it's too big of a wish. Anyway, what brings you out again, Kitty? And what happened to you yesterday at the thankful event? As she spoke those words, he wanted to wrap his arms around her. To utter words of love. As he turned the world upside down to make her Christmas wish come true. No matter the size of the wish, he wanted to tell her. She was his. Taking a deep breath, clearing the thoughts he was worried were sketched across his face, he absentmindedly rubbed the back of his neck. There hadn't been a safe way for him to transform into Cat and brush off the mountains of questions of why he would be there. Plus, he had been too distracted trying to speak to Marinette as Adrian, and to be honest, had forgotten about the half-promise he had made to her. Oh, I'm sorry. Something had come up and... I couldn't get away. How did it go? It was really fun, and it was lovely to give back to our small community and say thank you. It seemed like people liked the tree I made with Adrian and expressed what they were thankful for. And what was it my princess was thankful for? And I'm sure you read mine after I left. He could feel his throat becoming tighter, squeezing out his words. I did, and thank you, Kitty, for your kind words. She leaned forward and pressed her hand onto his shoulder, giving it a light pat. I'm glad I've been able to help. But, she lowered her voice to barely a whisper, I told someone who is very dear to me that I am thankful for them. She removed her hand off him and began to fiddle with her fingers in a nervous manner. He wanted to ease her anxiety, to be able to tell her he felt the same as they took the next step. But Cat wasn't able to do any of that. Instead, he placed his hand over hers, stilling them. You told them you're thankful for them? That's a nice gesture. As a friend? What did they say? He knew he was stepping on thin ice, and at any moment it could break and reveal too much. She raised her eyes, searching his. He actually told me first, but... She stepped back, slipping her hand out of his, grabbing the lights once more, threading them around the railings. Oh, it's just... Confusing, that's all. Anyway, Christmas is less than a month away. Are you all set? His heart dropped like a stone in the ever-flowing river of his continual thoughts. What had she meant by it? He knew not to press further, not wanting her to feel uncomfortable as she clearly wanted to change the subject. The next step he would have to make needed to be Adrian. Tomorrow. He helped to thread the lights around the curved metal. Not really. We don't really celebrate the holiday season in my house. She raised an eyebrow at him. Let me just say, my father would give Scrooge a run for his money. Cat shrugged his shoulder at the pity look he was now receiving off his princess. It is what it is. But when I'm with my friends, I start to get into the holiday spirit. That was why it was so nice to hear you sing that song. Oh, I love Christmas songs. They always put me in the mood, especially when decorating. The pity had disappeared and was now replaced with the largest grin. I'm not surprised with a voice as sweet as yours. 
I don't have any Christmas songs, but I would be happy to listen to you more. He took a step closer, wanting to reach out, to give her a gesture to show how dear she was to him. Oh, hush you kitty. But wait, I have an idea. She dropped the remainder of the light and opened her skylight and climbed inside, gesturing for him to follow her. The space had a gentle scent of oranges and spices from the candle on the side, whilst a sugary vanilla lingered in the background. It reminded him of their time together. Oh, how much he loved doing that project with her. He paused. That was it. Oh, it's in here somewhere. She was darting around her room, searching under craft projects. Sorry, I'm in the middle of making my Christmas presents. What are you searching for? A CD? He helped her search, taking in the different types and colours of fabric, wondering what she was planning, hoping with all his heart that there might be a small gift in there for Adrian. You're so creative, princess. I love to see what you make and how you make it. He went to move over to the chest and search inside when she darted out in front of him. It's not in there. I know that for a fact. Would you be able to look way over there for me? She gestured to the opposite side of the room, and he just laughed, nodding his head, and saw her let out a deep breath. What was she hiding? He picked up stray cuttings of fabric and magazine pages with images circled for inspiration, he guessed. But one sheet stood out. It had a feel of a photocopy than that shiny, thin magazine paper. Was this a new manga? And yet, it was unlike any comic he had seen before. The style, the symbols written down along the side of the picture, the look of the person was like a superhero drawing. Why did it look so familiar? Like he'd seen it before. And then he noticed a sketching of a piece of jewellery beside the character. A bracelet. It was green with, like jade with a face. He stared at the piece of paper in his hand and then at Marinette, who was still darting around the room. Why would she have something like this in her room? What did it mean? Why would Ladybug entrust Marinette with such an important piece of information? Oh, I found it! Yes, thank goodness. It was sending me crazy there, you know? She stood in the room and held up the CD case. Cat suddenly placed the piece of paper in his hand back into the stack of magazine cuttings and suddenly felt light-headed, needing some air. He turned back round and now found her sitting at the desk, writing something onto the CD case, and then stood up, handing it to him. Here, for you to get into the spirit when you don't have friends around. I have circled my favourite ones and... Kitty, are you alright? Yeah, just feeling tired. That's all. Thanks for the CD, Princess. Marinette. He found himself staring at her, suddenly aware of tiny details he somehow had became blind to before. No. It wasn't possible. Could it? Okay, Kitty. Take it easy, and I hope it... helps. She went to stroke his arm, but he pulled back, darting towards the step, and opened the window. He wanted to say something, to say thanks, to know for sure. To confess, but his mouth stuck together like he'd been eating peanut butter on crackers. Instead, all he could do was give her a half smile and a wave the CD as he took off. He needed to get back and have a much-needed conversation with Plag. Part 2 A very troubled Adrian's POV Calm down, kid. You know I'm limited to what I can say, and there are rules we need to follow. 
Plague shouted back in frustration and then flew off grumbling. I know all this. We talked about it last night, but the pit in my stomach hasn't gone away with sleep like you suggested, nor would a round of cheese. Adrian dropped onto the edge of his bed and placed his jaw into his hands. A sound closer to a growl poured out between his teeth. I need to know why Marinette had a photocopy of a page from the grimoire, which seemed to be linked to the snake miraculous. I mean, it was just there, in her room, stacked casually with other pieces of paper, as if it was that natural for her to have it. He glanced up, expecting Plague to be hovering in front of him, but he was nowhere to be seen. Over the past 12 hours, dotted between patches of sleep, he had thrown out countless questions at his Kwame with no answers in return. Rather, he had taken to hiding in his cheese cupboard and throwing out the usual line of refusal. Plague, if you don't start talking soon, I will have no option to use the cheese card. How would you feel about a week on those cheese slices? It's not even cheese. They even melt like plastic. Then talk. It's marinette. Who I'm falling in love with. I was ready to confess today. And now this? Why, Plague? Why her? Kid, think. Wasn't she Multi Mouse once? She came in with all the other Kwamis and saved me and Tiki. Even I admit she was amazing that day and coming up with the plan. She is clever. The way she thinks outside the box to solve solutions. What if she was working on those pages to solve the countless questions to help beat Shadow Moth? Plag let out a little sigh and flew to Adrian's shoulder. You think Ladybug asked her to study the grimoire? To help us in that way since she isn't able to use the mouse miraculous anymore? Perhaps. One of the big rules is as Kwamis aren't allowed to know the secrets in case. Well... It was very rare for Plag to let his guard down and show the sadness he felt for his friends and the need to help to get them back. Seeing this caused Adrian to soften and release some of the anger he was feeling. It's just... I'm confused now and the situation between Marinette and myself has become even more complicated. Let's say she was helping Ladybug why would that make things more complicated between the two of you, since you're Cat Noir and have been visiting her as both? Yeah. You might have a point there, Plag. Plag flew up and scrunched his little face and then folded his arms smugly. Excuse me? Say that again? I was right? You weren't right. <laughs> you just made a good point. Adrian couldn't help letting out a little chuckle, enjoying the sensation it brought. Oh, I love her, Plague. And it feels different from how I felt about Ladybug. But what if she wasn't just helping Ladybug? What if that's where your head is going now? The bakery girl could be Ladybug? Well, I've said it before with less evidence. Kid, all you got is a photocopy of a page. That isn't enough to confront Ladybug. Say you know her identity, especially given the rules she has against it. Then... I'll collect more evidence, prove to myself once and for all she is Ladybug. And how are you going to do that without giving away your cat noir genius? Simple. 
I will spend more time with her as much as possible with Marinette and Ladybug. I will compare all the little details and stop being so blind to what's in front of me. That'll be the day, Plag muttered to himself. Then what? If you're right, what will you do? Tell her you know? Date her as Marinette? Plag threw out a loaded questions, casually smirking to himself as he watched Adrian become more confused. I don't know. If she is, you know who? She ain't Voldemort, sniggered Plag, but Adrian hadn't noticed. Then she's rejected Cat countless times. Rejected that side of me. So how would Adrian be so different? How can I be with her if she doesn't accept the whole of me? Kid, before yesterday, you would have classed Marinette and Ladybug as two different people. Confused at your feelings for two different people. Yeah, and? Oh, you mean she might be? Plag muttered something under his breath and flew off across the room, picking up the CD Adrian had placed down last night. Here. He dropped it into Adrian's outstretched hands. Looks to me, bakery girl might not be in love with Cat Noir, but it doesn't mean she doesn't have feelings for him. Now, can I go and eat in peace for a while? Adrian didn't answer as his little friend's words sank in and stared at Marinette's handwriting on a post-it. To put you in a festive spirit and... No, you're not alone? Merry Christmas, Kitty. He flipped it over and saw the track list with tiny hearts around certain ones, made by a sharpie. He opened the case to get the CD out and a folded piece of paper flew out. Kitty, each track I have marked is one of my favourites and holds a special meaning. Know you are always welcome on my balcony if you need to talk or just the company. That's what friends are for, after all. Adrian could sense the calming sensation of his princess through her words. Plag was right again, he groaned. Marinette might not be in love with her, Kitty, but she had shown time and time again that he meant something to her, that she cared for him and that had been enough for him, believing he might have a chance as Adrian. So, if she was Ladybug, why did it matter so much to him of her different feelings? Ladybug had even told Cat that she couldn't love him, that she loved another. If Marinette was Ladybug, could he be that other? He refocused his attention back to the letter in his hand. The tracks were listed below and been given a number besides them and a note. Number one had been All I Want for Christmas with a note saying, I like to sing this song on the first day I decorate for the coming season, sending out my Christmas wish, as you already know. The image of last night popped inside his head of her singing across a starry night, bathed in a rainbow of colours from the fairy lights, as Adrian realised how much this girl meant to him, hoping he might be her Christmas wish. I hope your Christmas wish comes true for you this year, no matter what it happens to be. Adrian grinned at the words, if only she knew. He continued, number two, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I tend to listen to this track when I need a pick-me-up around the holidays or help to build up the enthusiasm at the start. I love to listen to the jazzy beat in contrast to the lyrics. So, I hope this helps to bring warmth and happiness at this time of year. 
No matter where you are or who you with. Remembering how he had compared his father to Scrooge and let out a light chuckle since he had left his princess. He ambled over to his sound system and placed a CD and skipped the tracks until he reached that one. As the piano sound filled his room, he pulled out his phone and searched for the lyrics. He could see why she enjoyed this song so much. There was something about it that helped to put a smile on your face with certain lyrics standing out to him, a reminder of Myronette. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start, and the thing that will make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your heart. He even hummed the tune as he got ready for school, finding his mood had lightened. Yes, things had got a dad more complicated with finding that sheet of paper, but trying to focus on the bright side... As Christmas was approaching, he could see his princess in an hour, whether she was Ladybug or not. He was still falling in love with her. And if she turned out to be... Ladybug? Then maybe all of his wishes will come true if he could work out what exactly both sides meant to her. All he needed to do was... Start opening your eyes to what's in front of you, Plag had called out. Hey, Plag, it's time to go to school. Are you ready? Adrian grabbed onto a piece of camembert to lull his friend out. Are you ready, more like? Know what you're going to do yet? Plag flew in front and held his mouth open as Adrian threw the cheese into the air. Yeah. I think I have a plan. He could hear Natalie calling, followed by a knock on the door by his bodyguard. He picked up his bag and gestured for Plag to hide. As the car pulled up to the steps outside the school, he could feel the quickening flutter in his stomach, glancing at the faces of the students gathering. As Adrian, he had last seen Marinette on the ship, giving each other a farewell hug as she thanked him yet again for all his help as he fumbled of the words to ask her out on an actual date. Yet, as Cat, he had seen her last night and ended up changing everything. But the issue was now, which one should he be? Guarded and act like the last week hadn't happened? Or lean on her new dynamics and follow through with this new plan? Wrapping his blue scarf around the collar of his jacket, he smiled as he spotted the familiar gestures of Marinette's arms waving in the air as she told some sort of story to Zoe, Rose and Julika. He hovered on the spot, surprised not to find Ali and Nina with her. He became unsure of approaching. He was about to take a step back and weave round for the lockers when he heard Zoe's voice call out his name. He turned back round and found Marinette's smile beaming at him, with a cute pink in her cheeks, and he couldn't help but agree to join them. Adrian, I was just saying to Marinette a massive thank you for the gathering on Saturday and the tree you two made together. That was an amazing idea, said Zoe. Oh, that was all Marinette. I just helped where I could. Adrian said, whilst fiddled with the strap on his back. That's not true, Adrian. We were a team. We did it together. Marinette said, catching his attention and felt his own cheeks blush at the soft smile she was giving him. I really enjoyed creating that project with you. He noticed their friends make silent gestures to leave in the corner of his eye as he continued to focus on Marinette. Was this the moment he'd been looking for to pull off his plan? Well, I was hoping you might say that. I could do with some help to craft my own project. I have some sketches, but not the final design like you had done with the tree. Yeah, cool. I mean, I would love to help you. The crafting, not the designing, unless you would like my help. With the last design, that is. She darted a gaze from her feet to his eyes and let out a cute giggle and then shot them back down again. 
Great! I can show you at lunchtime, if you're about. Yeah! It's a date! I, I, I mean, it's a plan. A plan for us to meet and go over your designs. Not, not a date, but as friends. She was nervous too, which helped him a little with his. Oh, how much he wanted to call it a date. But, no. Once his head was a little clearer, then he would ask her on a proper date. Cool. We had better... Are you going to the lockers? Yeah. She nodded her head as his fingers brushed against hers. The touch ignited a magnetic force within his skin, drawing his hand to hers. As her gaze locked onto his, their hands became entwined and saw her eyes widened, followed by a deep blush, finishing with a cute grin. Yeah, this felt right. Small steps. Part 3. A Snowy Adrian's POV they had made it as far as the lockers, holding hands, with no one noticing. He could feel the tingling sensation remain as he grabbed his books for the morning lesson whilst dealing glances at Marinette, and his heart adding in an extra beat to its rhythm. As he stepped back into the corridor, he would have offered to take a hand into class, but they were filled with books. Had she done it on purpose, just in case he wouldn't offer? Or would offer? No, Adrian, you're overthinking this again. Smile and walk her to class. Yeah, he could do that. Knowing Marinette or possibly Ladybug was sitting behind him the whole time. Yeah, he could do this. Two hours into his history class, Staring down at the chapter they were to read on Napoleon's attack on the front line during the middle of the French Revolution, Adrian felt the lack of sleep in his mind as his eyes kept wanting to drift off to sleep. Reading the same paragraph on how Napoleon would send love letters to his Josephine. His mind drifted off course and imagined him sending Marinette a love letter. What would he put inside of it? He had written a valentine's to Ladybug once and received a reply, hoping it was from her. Was it from Marinette? Then the idea came to him. He had samples of Marinette's writing from notes she had taken down for him. Look, it's snowing! Kim shouted out across the class. Cool, how thick is it? Alex added in, drawing the rest of the class to the windows. Excitedly, the group of students jumped up from their seats and dashed over to the large windows. In fact, I wouldn't believe it's snowing. It's an Akuma, Max corrected the class, drawing Adrian's attention to what was happening. He glanced around the room, making sure no one noticed him slipping out when he realised Marinette was suddenly nowhere to be seen. She wasn't in her seat, nor in the crowd now gathered in front of the windows. He grabbed his bag and slipped out of the class, racing down the corridor as he noticed Marinette running into the locker room. Was this more of the evidence he had been searching for? How many times had it happened before and he had been so caught up transforming to Cat, he hadn't seen his lady was doing the same thing right beside him? He dashed down the stairs and slipped through the doors, peering behind a locker towards the girl's side, waiting for the proof to appear. Kid, don't you want to transform? Yeah, in a minute, Plag. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Either Marinette is going to walk out of those doors, or Ladybug. We don't have time for your mystery series, Columbo. We need to help. Plague said as he rammed a piece of cheese into his mouth. Extra fuel. Adrian sighed. Plague was right. Oh boy, he was getting sick of that line. Fine. He pulled his attention away from the door and ran in the opposite direction to the boy's side and into a cubicle. 
Plag, claws out. As he was about to climb out of the window, a thought occurred to him. What if Ladybug did the same thing on her side? Then he wouldn't have seen her leave. Smiling to himself, he took off into the direction of the blizzard that was now forming. Cat stood on a rooftop and let out a hearty laugh at the sight before him. It reminded him of Glaciator, but instead of ice cream, the form was a snowman walking down the streets of Paris with its own dark cloud above, releasing a heavy snowfall and filling the streets below in snow. Cat, this isn't funny. LB landed next to him, taking in the view. What? You think Frosty here isn't a tad comical? No, not when he's turning people into ice sculptures and thanks to the snow, kids aren't running and hiding as they should be. She pointed to a group of children around ten-ish having a snowball fight a block away and then pointed to the now melting crystal figures. So the ice people weren't good, but he couldn't help feel envious of the kids having a snowball fight. He'd never done that element of winter before. When it had been cold enough for the snow to lay, it was deemed too dangerous for him to venture out, just in case he caused an injury before a shoot. He sighed, focusing back on task. Yeah, okay, you've made your point. Frosty ain't so jolly after all. So what's the plan, Ladybug? He leant on his staff and watched her calculate the situation before him. He had witnessed this moment hundreds of times, but now the thought it could be Marinette standing beside him, working out the solution, seemed right. The look of determination on her face as she scrunched up her eyebrows, narrowing her stare at the various scenarios, and rolled her lips between her teeth while making a list on her fingers. Hadn't we seen Marinette do that without the mask on when one of her friends needed help and she came up with the solutions? Before, he would have stared at her in awe as a rosy film crossed over his eyes and marvelled at how she had come up with the plan, making her this goddess figure than a super. But that rosy sheen had disappeared. He was still in awe of how she figured everything out, but he now saw the workings as if he was a child opening up the clock face and was greeted with the clogs and the wheels. It was no longer this magical item that simply knew what time it was, but it was a piece of specially crafted genius, which fitted the pieces together in perfect harmony to make it work. That's what Ladybug did for every single battle saw the elements they needed, whether it was an additional member of the team or an unconventional item. Her creative mind brought it together. He saw how Marinette could be Ladybug, not by wishful thinking, but by finally seeing and recognising the genius behind every plan. It wasn't all down to Lady Look, as she would have suggest. Another side of his princess, a humbleness. Thank you. The words escaped his lips. Thank you? For what, cat? She had stopped what she was doing and studied his expression and grinned, noticing he hadn't meant to say it out loud. A friend of mine, a certain princess, reminded me recently to be more thankful and I realised I've never thanked you for all that you do during a kuma battle. Working out the plan, taking on the burden if you should go wrong, and the stress ensuring we win, whilst I do what I'm told most of the time. He couldn't help breaking up the seriousness with a cheeky grin, making her giggle. So, yeah, thank you. A rosy blush formed under a mask with a soft look in her eyes. That means a lot to me cat. Thank you. For the first time, he didn't see Ladybug staring back at him through her lashes, but Marinette. When he had complimented her during those afternoons crafting the tree. But if that was the case, didn't that throw out even more questions? She bopped him on the shoulder, giving it a slight push, redirecting the awkwardness away from her. He chuckled. So, 
Saying all that, do you have a plan, my lady? I did until some silly cat distracted me with kind words, throwing him a smirk, and he could swear a wink. I was thinking, what if the victim is like Andre, stuck inside with the Akuma and we have to break him out to get to it? So, melt Frosty. Yeah, but that cloud following him around, keeping the air around him chilly, that is going to be harder said than done. Can we blow away the cloud? I don't think that would work. What if we could source a heat that was greater than the cold? Counterbalance it. Kurt suddenly remembered last week's chemistry lesson on particles in contrast to solid and liquid. How Marinette had placed up her hand and said, If freezing is zero Celsius, you would need a heat reaching boiling point, a hundred Celsius for water, as it shifted to steam forming gas particles and away from solid and the refreezing element. Ladybug repeated, word for word. There you are, princess. Chuckling to himself, resisting the Cheshire cat grin which wanted to form across his face, Cat let out a single cough. <clears throat> we need a large kettle in the middle of Paris? How? Where? No, not a kettle. Oh, we need... She threw up a yo-yo in the air. Lucky charm. Down fell an enormous box of matches. Fire? Matches to light a fire? Why not a flamethrower instead? He raised an eyebrow at LB and got, that's not helpful, look back. I'll get Frosty here all snuggled up in front of a warm, cosy fire with an extra-large mug of hot chocolate. Cat, she said through a muffled snigger. His heart rejoiced at the sound, which meant even more to him now. Wait. This weekend, aren't they celebrating Winter Solstice with a bonfire in the park? Isn't Winter Solstice a few weeks away? That doesn't matter. The bonfire? She stared at him, waiting for his brain to catch up. Getting frosty, cosy next to the fire isn't a poor plan after all. If we can get him close enough when the heat is right, should be hot enough to melt him. So, you set up and I lead him over? Cat got his baton out ready to battle. Cat versus Frosty, who will win? Yeah, sounds like a plan to me. Cat? Stay safe. No big risks. Okay? She glanced over at him, pulling out a yo-yo. As if I would do that. Then he noticed the look in her eyes. Knowing them better, he realised she meant it. She feared for him. Cared for him. I promise. There was no way this frosty could freeze him. Not with such a warm glow inside his heart. The rest of the battle had gone according to plan. Most of it. Cat led Frosty to the fire that was in the shape of a giant snowflake, but had dodged one of Frosty's freezing snowballs at the last second, with only his tail getting hit slightly. So now, Cat had a popsicle for a tail that dragged in the snow. He was just grateful it wasn't a fully functioning one, otherwise that would hurt instead of just looking stupid. Frosty turned out to be an 11-year-old boy who had wished for a snow day so that he could play with his friends instead of school. Ladybug held the box of matches in her hand while standing in an inch of perfectly powdered snow. I can see where the kid is coming from. I've never had a snowball fight. What? Never? Paris has snowed before without being a Akuma, but you've never... She used the same tone Marinette used when Adrian revealed his own secrets as they worked together. After the second day, he had found it easy to let her in, more than he had let anyone, and told her small confessions. Was he feeling that now, letting his lady into another side of Cat? Maybe that was something he needed to do for Elby, to see more Adrian in Cat, and yet his princess already did. 
Oh, all this was hurting his head. No, I was never allowed out and no friends to. He needed to stop before he gave too much away. Okay. Bear with me. I have been experimenting. Ladybug held out the lucky charm and mumbled words under her breath until a smile formed. Miraculous ladybugs, we ask you to repair the rubble, heal the tragic, and if it's not too much trouble, leave some of the magic. Crossing her fingers and looking a tad embarrassed, she tossed the lucky charm into the air. What was with that rhyme? I hope you should see in a second if it worked. Ladybug held out a hand as a tiny swarm of mini-bugs swept across the city, healing the ice forms back into people, repairing the damage to the buildings and properties. But he noticed it was leaving the snow. Frosty had spread across the city, chasing her after a cat. Wow! I can't believe that actually worked! Ladybug burst out laughing, followed by jumping up and down on the spot and grabbing her cat by the shoulders. You you did this for me? He gazed into her eyes, which were still wide with wonder in her own creation. Yeah, well, I wanted to try at least. Still can't believe that awful rhyme worked. Not my best poetry. Her earrings were beeping, signalling she had two minutes left. Unfortunately, we can't have a match, as I need to head and about to transform... But I wanted to give you something, especially after those kind words. Maybe as a civilian, you could grab the opportunity. Maybe it will help you to get into the spirit of Christmas. Have listened to some tunes my princess gave me. How, how about a movie night with your princess tomorrow? She raised her eyebrows at him and gave him a little smirk, teasing him. What was happening? Watch a movie? I need to go, but I heard Marinette is having a movie night, watching White Christmas, a classic, and I'm sure she would love the company from her Tomcat. Think about it. Catch you later, cat, and enjoy the snow. She pulled out a yo-yo and zipped away. He stared after her. He had got this all wrong, hadn't he? She cared about her kitty. But in what way? He used his baton and leapt onto the nearest roof, making his way back to the school, laughing at the thought of seeing her so soon and the bubbling happiness which was forming inside his chest. Down below, he saw groups of friends playing in the snow and recognised his classmates amongst them. Jumping into the nearest alleyway, Cat transformed back into Adrian. Watching Marinette running out of another, joining the group. How? How had he missed all these signs which had been in front of him all this time? Dude, look! How is this possible? Snow! Nino shouted as he approached, not noticing the snowball flying towards him. Hitting him in the side of the face, he gave a little shudder as fragments fell down his collar. Glancing around, he noticed Marinette blushing, scooping up another snowball. Really? You would attack me whilst I was off guard? That's not very fair, Marinette. He laughed, throwing his own and hitting her in the arm. She looked at him with her ladybug game face that only Cat would know. It is on, Adrian, lobbing one back whilst darting away from another. He hummed the song Frosty the Snowman, wondering if it was on the playlist gifted by his princess, whilst looking forward to a Christmas film tomorrow night with this amazing girl, taking one more step closer to his Christmas wish. All I want for Christmas is... Part 4. A cosy Adrian's POV. Tonight, Adrian, or should he say Cat, 
was spending the evening with his princess invited by Ladybug. She had done that before, suggested leaning on Marinette when Ladybug couldn't step in and he had thought they were super friends, with her being multi-mouth. That's right, the whole mouse thing. Okay, think of that later. Anyway, Marinette, she had always made sure she had been there for him in one form or another and this evening she was doing it again, inviting Cat round to watch White Christmas. It was one of those films which he had been on his wish list but hadn't had the heart to watch. It was one of his mother's favourite holiday films, the words of the songs filtering out of her lips when she thought no one was watching and they had finally made plans to watch it before she went missing. The memory caused his heart to pang with grief. It had been a few years now but he was finally getting round to seeing it and he couldn't think of anyone better than his princess to watch it with. The only issue was, part of him wished she had invited Adrian around this evening instead of Cat. They still hadn't found a chance to talk since Saturday. Yesterday's afternoon after the Akuma battle was taken up with a different battle, which included snowballs. And yet, now he had confirmed it in his heart and mind that Marinette was everything. His lady and his princess only made him love her more. Plague still insisted that he didn't have concrete evidence that she was Ladybug, but maybe that's something Cat could do tonight, along with trying to figure out her feelings towards Adrian. Yes, she was thankful for him, but did she love him? There was too much on the line. If he should speak those words out loud to her, he had to be certain he would hear them back. His heart couldn't take another rejection, knowing it was coming from both of them. Adrian picked up the CD Marinette had given him, number three, White Christmas, Bing Crosby. This song brings warmth to my heart and a sense of comfort, even when seasons don't turn out the way I planned. I come back to this song and it brings me home. The tradition every year as I curl up with Maman and Papa watching the film, eating festive treats, and glow in my heart means the world to me. I hope with all my heart, Kitty, that you have such a tradition to lean on when times get hard. And if not, you are always welcome at mine. He placed on the track, the famous notes trickling out before the soothing voice of Bing filled the place around him, dreaming of a white Christmas, describing the ideal. He hadn't realised, but his princess had already invited him along tonight. Ladybug was simply telling him the time and date to attend. She really wanted him to feel the spirit of the season. She may not be in love with her kitty, and yet she was showing him love in a different way. Her way. Are you really playing that song again? For a thousand time? It was bad enough when it came out. Never mind on repeat in your room. Plague groaned. You remember when Bing first sang it? 1942 wasn't that long ago. Not for me, kid. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but are we going to school today? At least there you can't play it. Adrian noticed for the first time Plague zipping back and forth, taking pour full of cheese into his school bag. Extra supplies to get me through the day. You want me all charged up for this evening, don't you? For your princess? Plague teased. Yeah, but I'm going to be stinking all day now. No, I think only by second period. They'll be gone by then. Cheese gremlin? Adrian yanked his bag away as Plague tried to put the last load in. That's enough. I won't be able to fit my books in at this rate. Let's go. Adrian called out as a knock sounded at his door. Marinette had arrived slightly late to class this morning, which meant he had missed the opportunity to talk with her, escort her to class, or the possibility of holding her hand again. He missed her touch but his heart sang as the melody of White Christmas floated behind him as she hummed out the tune while studying. He accepted it, as if it was a secret message for his ears alone, that tonight he would share this magical tradition with her. 
She was taking him home. He glanced back, catching her gaze and received a wide smile, a twinkle in her eyes and a blush on her cheeks in return. All he could do was grin, his heart pounding in his chest, for this girl made the words too hard. But it was a grin that couldn't be wiped off his face, no matter what happened during the day. This evening would be perfect. He had ordered through a local florist, a large poncettia, but he hadn't realised how big it would be, in its golden pot and extra flourishes of Christmas decorations. He wanted to take the Duban Chans a token gift to show how much it meant to him to be invited to tonight. When the florist saw Cat Noir wandering in to collect the order, they threw in a box of chocolates and requested a photo to place on their website. Approved by Cat Noir went down well in the public of Paris. Instead of his usual entrance, jumping onto the balcony and tapping at the window like a stray cat, no wonder she referred to him as a tomcat, this evening he knocked on the side door. Last minute nerves filled his mind with thoughts. Maybe she hadn't invited him. Maybe it was a guilt gesture. Maybe she had just been polite. And yet, the moment Marinette opened the door and saw a cat peering around the enormous red plant, she grinned. Welcome, kitty. Come on in, if you think you can with that, she chuckled. It's for your folks. I couldn't come empty-handed. That, what would they think of this cat? Thank you, kitty. It's very thoughtful and... Large. Not sure where we're going to put it, but my mum would like it. It's strange, seeing you use the side door instead of at my window, but I'm glad Ladybug could pass the message on. He was grateful the plant was hiding his face as he grinned, watching her cover her tracks like that, pretending one side against the other. Making him realise how much he did it, as Cat talked about Adrian to his princess, including tonight. I've been looking forward to the film tonight. This film has been on my wish list for a while. You haven't seen White Christmas? Marinette paused, causing Kat to bump into her, but she didn't seem to notice as she spun round to face him. In that case, you're going to love this. My folks love to go all out tonight, she beamed at him. As Marinette opened the door to the apartment, Kat could hear the soft sounds of her parents chatting away with the gentle noise of classic instrumental songs in the background, finished with the smell of warm spices. His heart skipped a beat with excitement. My mom, Papa, Kitty is here, and he has brought you something, Marinette called out, and he felt the heat rising in his cheeks. Perhaps this was too much. Wow! Look at this, Tom. Isn't it stunning? Sabrine replied. Is there a cat attached to this, or was it big enough to walk itself up the stairs? Tom chortled, taking the plant and moving to the side table, exposing a bashful cat underneath. Thank you, my son. It's perfect present for my favourite black cat of Paris. As Cat was about to do his usual nervous rub at the back of his neck, he noticed he was still holding the small gift bag. And these are for you, Marinette. He handed her the bag and received a smile in return as she peered inside. Oh, chocolates. Thanks, Kitty. I haven't finished your gift just yet. It should be ready soon. You've made me something? He hadn't meant to sound as surprised as he did. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I make my friend a gift for Christmas? Now, come and have a seat. The film is pretty long, so we're going to start it whilst Papa finishes making his famous macaroni and cheese. He guessed being a cat that cheese would be a good bet. She lowered her voice on the last part so that her Papa wouldn't hear. Sounds great. My Kwame would love it even more. Oh, in that case, I'll box them up for you to take with you. Papa always makes plenty. She gave him a little wink and grabbed the remote and he noticed the film titles were ready to press play. They had been waiting for him. He had never felt more welcomed even in his own home. 
as the red titles rolled, playing small snippets of music which will be the featured in the film, Marinette jumped out of her seat once more and bounded for the kitchen. Here you go, Kitty. I hope you like hot mold cider. She handed him a mug before getting an answer. To be honest, he had never tried it before, but as the warmth seeped into his gloved hands and the smell of sugar, spices and apples hung in the air around him, he already knew he was going to like it. As the film progressed, he couldn't help wonder what he found enticing more. The magic of old Hollywood, or watching Marinette's family bouncing off one another, filtering across the room. Tom doing his own take on the sister song, pretending a pillow was his oversized fan, or Sabrim humming away to the song, dreaming about snow. Oh, the simple delight at watching Marinette laugh joyfully at her, with her parents, joining in from time to time whilst jumping from her seat every ten minutes, unable to sit still until she picked up her knitting needles with the blue wool. But one of the best parts was how they acted like Cat was just another member of the family, instead of a superhero in their living room, or better yet, a boy dressed as a superhero sitting on their sofa. Here you go, my boy. Tom handed Cat a bowl filled with gooey, cheesy pasta to eat whilst watching the film. Thank you, sir. I mean, Tom, this smells delicious. Adrian had never had a meal on his lap, never mind watching a film surrounded by family. Was this what he had been missing, but never knew it until it existed until this moment? But if Adrian could convince Marinette that he was worthy of her, to hope that one day she would love him as much as he loved her, then could it be possible? If he gained some of her luck, this could be his too. He watched as the character Betty bumps into Bob to naturally break into song, count your blessings, and notices Marinette beside him, lost in her own world, singing along to the words, looking wistful as she glanced down at the blue knitting in her hands. What he would have given to lean into her and whisper, she was his most treasured blessing, and that he would be happily be her knight on a horse for her. He sighed as a thought popped into his head. Maybe this was the opportunity he'd been looking for. Princess, what do you count as your blessings? His voice caught her off guard, becoming flustered and turning a rosy pink colour in her cheeks. Marinette gave Cat a quick glance before focusing her sight on her knitting. It was a move he normally saw her do in front of Adrian, not Cat. I would say... I might have more blessings than others do, especially at this time of year. I suppose it links back to being thankful. Cat took over Adrian's inner shyness. You told me, you told someone you were thankful for them. Is that what you mean? He watched as her eyes widened. What did you mean by that? Call it my inner cat curiosity, but I just wondered, as it can be taken in various ways. She stood at his face, wondering if her secrets were safe, and then glanced over at her parents, who were distracted by other things. To be honest, that is the same issue I'm facing. I don't know in which way the person meant their gesture of thankful. If I'm only a friend, or... Her blush deepened and focused back on her blue wool. He had thought he had made his feelings clear to her, but now seeing it from her side and how confused he was over the exact same words? How had he not seen it earlier? She didn't realise how much she meant to him, and yet hope grew inside of him at her own words and feelings that maybe he had a chance after all. I mean... There has been little gestures since that makes me think. Oh, I don't know. You question how much is in your mind, or if the last second I'll fumble over my words in front of him, unable to express my feels yet again, or take this for example. She held up the blue knitting. This is for him. 
I'm sitting here watching White Christmas and knitting him a blue hat to go with the exact colour scarf I made him a few years ago. Adrian pictured his beloved blue scarf, the one his father had given him, right? The funny thing is, I can't tell him that. What? I'm confused. Why not? Cat added in. This is going to sound silly, but he doesn't know that scarf is from me. He believes his father had given it to him for his birthday. She smiled at his confused expression. I tried to give it to him at school, but failed, as always. So instead, I dropped it around at his house. I don't know what happened, but the next day at school, he turned up all excited that his father had given it to him. Who was I to spoil that for him, especially when he doesn't have the best? Anyhow, he was happy and I wasn't going to break that for him. Marinette, you're telling me you took the time to make this person a thoughtful gift and you let someone else take credit for it? You never told he them. He leaned in a little closer, unable to believe what he was hearing. It's not my place to. But here I am making a matching hat. Which, this time I have promised myself I will give it to him. Myself, n no matter what happens. A forlorn look spread across her face. Anyway, enough about my silliness. He moved closer to her, closing the gap and whispered, Marinette, nothing what you have said is silly. It is the opposite of silly. It is selfless. You must really care for this person. I do, but oh, it's complicated. If only things were as simple as the movies, she gestured to the screen, now filled with dancers and singing another song. Thank you, Kitty. You're a good listener. She casually leant her head on his shoulder as if they had done it countless times. Oh. How much he wished he could wrap his arm around her, bringing her in closer. You have said a few times now that how you are here for me, if I need someone. It goes both ways, princess. You can talk to me any time about anything. And this person, whoever they be, is very lucky to have someone like you care about them. Love, you didn't do right by me. Betty sang out from the TV and he could feel his princess tighten up against him. My one love affair didn't get anywhere from the start. The semi Joe who had winter snow in his heart wasn't smart. Love, you didn't do right by me. She said nothing, but he saw in the corner of his eye her hand wiping across her eyes and cheeks, knowing if he commented she would blame it on the film. But he knew that feeling all too well about being lost and confused. However, this time he could do something about it. Adrian could do something about it. He will do something about it. Tonight, he may not have gotten the evidence he needed to prove to Plague that he was right, she was Ladybug and stopped his excuses, but he had discovered so much more. That even if Marinette wasn't Ladybug, his heart had been right in choosing her. A girl with so much love and warmth placing other needs before their own, willing to sacrifice her own happiness to ensure someone else's, was more heroic than anything he had witnessed from Ladybug. Okay apart from the whole saving Paris thing, but this person who was resting her head against him was a hero with or without a mask, and he would make himself worthy of her. As the song White Christmas sang out from the TV, the four of them all curled up on the sofa joined in with the music, singing out for all to hear, including Cat. That night, he left his princess and the family he wished for with goodies made with love, a glow in his heart that could melt any ice or snow, and a plan he would implement starting tomorrow.
All I want for Christmas is... Part 5. A nervous wreck. Adrian's POV. It had been a few days and still Adrian hadn't found the perfect opportunity to ask Marinette out on a date that wouldn't be dramatised by Alia and commented on by Chloe. They hardly had any alone time together, but today was going to be different. Today, he would make it happen. Encouraged by Plague's teasing, Adrian had come up with a plan to create a new project. This had been the plan all along, before he was distracted by the fact Marinette turned out to be his lady, his bugaboo. He wanted to create the ease of them working together. He chuckled to himself, realising for the first time why they had worked so well. After all, they were Ladybug and Cat Noir, cementing the fact that Adrian and Marinette shared the same dynamics as their counterpart. He just had to show it to her. Kid, why are you making this more complicated? Why don't you just ask her out on an actual date? Plag moaned from the locker, flinging another piece of cheese into his mouth. What if she says no? Or it becomes awkward and she regrets it? No, this way we have things to talk about. Something to focus on. An excuse not to tell her your feelings. Plag, be quiet. And it's not like that. It's just, I'm scared. Adrian? Are you alright? He closed his locker door and saw Marinette pop her head around the corner. Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean... It was rude of me. I, I shouldn't have. Um, but did you say you're scared? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I talk to myself from time to time. Uh, <laughs> helps to get my thoughts out of my head. He knew he had turned the darker shade of red you could imagine, feeling the heat to cause a ripple of sweat to trickle down his back. Had she heard the rest? Had she heard him say plague? I, I, I did say that. Um, I, I'm making a project. I'm, I'm scared I won't get it done in time for Christmas. Way to go, aggress, smooth. Oh, really? You're working on a project? Can I ask? What is it? And would you like some help with it? I mean, if you're worried that you won't get it done in time, we we could work on together like last time. You help me, so it's only fair to return the favour. She glanced up at him through her eyelashes with her face tilted down, scrunching up her nose as she pursed her pink lips together. Oh, too cute. And how he could... No, remain focused, but... How could he? With her ocean eyes he could drown in, or tempting lips drawing him in. He pretended to get an extra book out of his locker, anything to distract him, as Plag sat there, smirking at him with his bright red face. Uh, yeah, would be nice you offer hell that like me. What was wrong with his words? Why was he not able to function? I, I mean, yes, yes, I, I would be grateful for your help. He took a deep breath. Her face held a questioning stare. Great. Shall we say tomorrow? Unless you already have plans. I know how your timetable can be busy at this time of year. She tugged her woolly sleeve down over her hand and twisted the fabric at the edges before brushing it against her lips, hiding her smile. No, I mean, tomorrow will work. I, no, I, I don't have any other commitments. He watched as her smile grew wider and wasn't able to hide it as the glow reached her cheeks and then into her eyes. Thank you, Pr Marinette. I'm, I really enjoyed spending time with you. 
His mind floated back to the other night. He had curled up with his princess and the home he wished for. The weight of her head on his shoulder. Wanting to wrap his arm around her. The same wanting held in his arms as she lingered in front of him. To feel the warmth of a hug in that woolly jumper that she probably knitted. Wow, he was getting easily distracted today. I mean, yeah, your help would be amazing. I was actually going to ask you, but you beat me to it. He chuckled as her eyes widened at the prospect of him asking her. The memories of the words she had spoken, the hat, the scarf, flashed into his mind. I like you, Marinette. I like you a lot. He took a step forward and ran his hand down from her shoulder to her elbow. He hadn't meant to blurt it out, but he was going with it. She deserved to know. She meant more to him than a friend. Re really? A hand dropped from her mouth and revealed an oh shape. His hand continued down her arm until they reached her hand. He breathed in and noticed her fingers locking around his. The warning bell for afternoon classes sounded out as students gathered in the locker room, collecting their things. But this time, he would not let go of her warm hand and nodded in confirmation. She took a step closer to him and rested her free hand on his chest, playing with a button on his shirt and was about to say something only to be broken apart when their class descended on them, not paying attention to what was happening before them and began tugging them in opposite directions. Marinette got carried away with Alia and Zoe into the corridor whilst Adrian heard Nino and Kim argue over a move in a video game. He wasn't paying much attention. He had said it. Well, half of it, half of his feelings for her, like, was a good place to start, right? If he had suddenly blurted out that he loved her, that would be too scary, right? But the best part had been arranging the date with Marinette. Wait, could he call it a date? They had now officially moved out of the friend zone, but... Then she hadn't said anything back. Okay, he had at least arranged to meet with her tomorrow. Work on his, this project of his. His stomach felt giddy, fluttering and sick at the same time. Oh, why was he so nervous? He had taken the hardest step, but it had been the right one. Over the two weeks, so much had happened, getting closer to Marinette to only find out that she was a ladybug, which had made complete sense, but also taking the time to work out his feelings as well as hers, not knowing if she could accept both sides of him, until he had seen the tenderness she had shown him with as Marinette, realising how much ladybug was a mask for her. One filled with pressure, anxiety and fear, but Marinette was warmth in a way a woolen blanket would wrap around you. Or the sweetness of her room, of her, as he leant against her, surrounded him in a scent of vanilla frosting. Or peace. A calming sensation wash over you as she hummed, focusing on her task. Dude, are you coming? The bell has sounded for the second time. Nina called out from the door. Uh, yeah. He fumbled with his bag, noticing Plag was no longer in his locker, but instead fast asleep, curled up into a bowl. What's wrong with you today? You seem distracted, quieter than normal. Nino stared back at his friend. They were the last ones in the corridor and heard the noise emitted out of their maths class. No, I'm good. Adrian stepped over the doorway and caught a glance of Marinette, who was discussing something with Alia. I'm better than good. 
She darted her eyes away from her friend for a split second and landed on him. A glowing pink blush formed against her cheek and felt it mirrored on his. Oh, great! He had to look away before they received comments and saw his friend grinning back at him. Oh, I know that look, my friend. You have it bad, don't you? Shh, Nino, I'll talk to you later. But, wait, you and... Adrian ignored his friend and climbed into the seat directly in front of Marinette, her gaze boring into the back of his head. No, wait, Alia is... Adrian spun around. No, Alia! He breathed with an almost hiss. No pressure, not until it's official. You have my word, dude. He mimicked the gesture of zipping his lips shut. The first hour dragged past, staring at the same set of numbers for the past ten minutes. His brain didn't want to think. The only thing that seemed to distract him was sketching out the design for the project as doodles on the side of his paper. He couldn't help keeping an ear out for any wandering conversation that didn't seem too personal filtering down from behind him, hoping to hear his name mentioned. He thought of sending her a note to ask for time and place for tomorrow, but that seemed too personal. While sending a text wasn't personal enough. He huffed at how complicated he made this in his mind. At the end of the lesson, people began chattering, gathering up their supplies, discussing the weekend plans. Adrian, taking a deep breath, fighting back the threatening, burning sensation in his throat. Marinette? Adrian? They said as one, followed by chuckles and questioning looks from their friends. She gestured for him to go first. I, I was just wondering what time would work best for you. For tomorrow? He fought the urge to rub the back of his neck, instead twisted the leather strap on his back. I can do early. Bring coffee or tea. Whatever you like. Great. Early. Shall we say nine? I need to help my parents with the breakfast run in the morning, but should be done by then. Cool, he said, suddenly aware that they were being watched by their friends as if they were animals in the zoo. Well, I, I better head. Can I text you? He swung the bag over his shoulder and glanced up at her, melting at the warm smile he received back. Yeah, she squeaked. Okay, time to leave before his face turned the same colour as his partner's suit. Her suit? Grinning at his own secret. Oh, all I want for Christmas is... Part 6. A snowy Adrian's POV. Adrian woke to the surprise of a thick layer of snow blanketed around Paris covering rooftops, streets and parks, creating a magical world. He couldn't help doing a little dance in front of the window and remembered seeing something on the CD Marinette had given him. He darted towards his sofa and studied the playlist. There it was. Numbered under five was Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow and a note written underneath it. I love to listen to the lyrics and imagine being cosy and warm whilst the weather outside stormed on. Normally rain, but in my mind it would be snow. Dreaming of waking for the chance to build a snowman and making snow angels. I hope this song brings a sense of warmth and comfort and let me know if you ever want to build a snowman. I'll be your partner. He couldn't help clutching the case to his chest as he danced around the room to the music, carefully listening to each word and creating an image in his mind. Perhaps, today, he could make a wish come true. Snowmen and angels. He had sent Marinette a few messages last night, but they had felt slightly awkward after his confession, and she still hadn't said anything back to clear up how she felt. 
they had agreed to meet at 9am so they had all day to help him with the project and now he had to make sure they fitted in time for other activities. He felt giddy, like a child on Christmas morning waiting for the agreed time they could venture out and start having fun. To much of Plague's annoyance, he played the song on repeat as he got ready, trying to ignore the grumbles out of the cupboard. Scrooge? Plague floated out with his paws crossed. That man was underrated for his vision, in my opinion. Shed in the wrong light. After all, he loved his cheese. Plague chortled. Plague! Oh, what's the use? We had better get going. Claws out. His father was away today and could have persuaded Natalie to allow a few hours today to work on a project, but the thought of his bodyguard hovering in the car outside or following him around as they collected what he, they needed didn't seem appealing. Instead, he gathered up his designs, placing them into a bag and wrapped his blue scarf around his neck, now knowing it was made by Marinette as if she herself was giving him a hug. He breathed in deep the smell of snow in the air, smiling at the clouds which still looked heavy to burst and took off. Skipping across the untouched powdered snow, grateful his feet didn't feel the cold, and landed in an alley near Marinette's bakery. His little black Kwame did a shudder dance in the chilly air and flew into Adrian's jacket pocket which held the cheese. Okay. I can do this. Deep breath. So, you told her and now going to spend the day together. They were at least friends. But what she had told Kat, he hoped she felt more. As he rounded the corner of the bakery, he saw the line making its way down the street as people shivered in the cold so that they could get their bread and treats for the weekend ahead. He knew that Dupan Chang's bakery was a favourite of Paris, but he had never seen a queue like this before. He weaved past him and knocked on the side door. It's open! Marinette called out from the other side. Was she talking to him? He inched the door open and peered around the gap. Hello? Adrian! Come in! Sorry! Poking a head around the corner of the back kitchen, followed by a finger that was covered in something. We are swamped this morning. I'll be with you in a second. Can I help? He called back, edging him further into the hallway. Really? He couldn't help grin at the sound of relief he heard in her voice at his offer. Yeah, tell me what I can do. Would you mind handing these out? She appeared from the room, holding out a tray filled with cups of... A rich aroma of hot chocolate hit him. Could you offer these to the people waiting outside? I hate to think of them being out in the cold. I mean, Maman and Papa are serving as fast as they can, but we've had a line since early. This is the third load of drinks. Yeah, sure. W whatever you need. He could feel his cheeks getting warm, and with his hands holding the tray, couldn't do his usual gesture of rubbing his neck to remove the awkward feeling. She darted around him and held open the door, catching his gaze properly for the first time. Thank you, Adrian, for doing this, offering him a warm smile that reached her eyes. I'll make some more up and join you in a couple of minutes. He nodded his head and shifted his mindset to the professional Adrian, who was used to greeting the public. He started at the door, holding the tray out. Would you like a hot chocolate? Compliments of the Dupan Chang Bakery and sorry for the wait. He repeated the line to each customer with a nod in return, with a few offering back. Kind of you, young man. He watched as Marinette joined him and made straight to the little girl standing with her own maman, snuggled against her jacket. Hello, would you like a hot chocolate? It's very yummy, with extra marshmallows followed by a wink and a smile at the mother waiting for her approval nod as she took one for each of them. Adrian grinned, feeling a glow inside of him burning bright, watching her kind heart in action. His everyday ladybug was the real one, in every sense of the word. With his tray empty, he waited until Marinette had served the rest and escorted her back inside. That was really nice of you, Marinette to give them drinks. 
There are two left, if you'd like one. Made with my own personal recipe. How could I say no to that? The rich chocolate hit his lips first, followed by the sugar. You're right, they are good. Do you need help with anything else? I'm more than happy to help. He paused as a hand rested on his arm. Thank you for the offer, but I think my parents can handle the rest. At least the customers will be more willing to wait now. Her sight drifted down to her hand as she quickly removed it and placed it around her cup. Shall we go upstairs? I can collect my things and you can show me your designs, if you like. She glanced upwards and caught his gaze, his breath catching in his chest. Yeah, sure, he muttered, nodding his head too many times and heard a light giggle escape her lips. She gestured out her hand for him to head out into the hallway and towards the stairs, but it didn't return to her cup. Instead, it hung by her side. He didn't know if it was the burst of confidence from the giggle or the sugar, but without thinking, Adrian reached out and took her hand into his, relaxing as her fingers weaved around his. But again, it didn't last long as they reached the apartment door, letting go of him to open it. His skin missed hers, longing to reach out again. He placed his empty cup into the recycling, following her lead, and hovered on the spot. Come upstairs with me for a minute, she asked, placing her hand back into his, encouraging him to follow. His heart fluttered, and all he could do was nod, knowing the colour had returned to his face. I was going to wait until Christmas to give this to you, but I finished it last night and now with the cold outside and you're wearing... She gestured to his scarf. Oh, how much he wanted to confess to her that he knew and loved her all the more for it. He had a feeling what was wrapped in this parcel she handed him, the image of her carefully crafting it beside him, and yet he had to try and hide the smile until he opened it. He paused. I haven't brought yours with me. I mean, but I have got you. I mean, I have a present for you, but not with me. Adrian, don't be silly. He watched as she took a deep breath, dragging her eyes up to meet his. Yesterday. Did you mean what you said? Her fingers wrapped around a stray piece of hair dangling down, twisting it up and down. His heart, his breath, his body felt weak, giddy and strong at the same time. His fingers tingled as he stroked across the back of her hand, rotating it round, palm to palm. Yes, I meant it, Marinette. I like you. I like you a lot, and not as a friend. I mean, more than a friend. I have for a while, but if you don't... Her hand darted from the parcel and landed on his lips, stopping him from continuing. Adrian? Really? I can't honestly believe it. Oh, I have liked you for a while. A long while. And when I got your note on Thankful Day, I hoped, but still didn't think that I was that lucky. He couldn't help grinning at Ladybug thinking she wasn't that lucky. He kissed her fingers, which were against his lips, before gently removing them with his own. Yeah, I felt the same, wondering in which way you were thankful, but... I had to tell you, spending that time with you, confirmed it in my mind what my heart already knew. He edged closer to her, the wrapping paper crumpling in his hand. Please, open it. Her gaze flickered from his and onto the present. Using both hands, he carefully peeled back the snowflake paper and revealed the blue knitted hat, with now a fluffy white pom-pom attached to the top, and a fur rim sewn across the bottom. It was perfect and cute all in one. The paper dropping to his feet, he held it up to his scarf. A perfect match. Thank you, Prince. Marinette. 
focusing on the hat in his hand, hoping she had an princess. Was that what you were about to say? Kitty? Her fingers reached out and stroked along the line on his face that would normally be covered by the mask. His eyes locked onto hers. No, 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 no. What? You think? I'm... Adrian. I heard you. Yesterday. It didn't sink in at first, and when you said... You liked me? Well... But last night, as I replayed that moment in my head, she turned a deep shade of red but held on to his gaze. I remembered. You talking to... Plague? You Kwame. He didn't think his eyes could widen any more, but somehow they did. She is talking about Kwame's? Does that mean she is going to f confess that she is Ladybug now that she knows? He is Cat Noir? I mean, I was multi-mouse, so I know something about them. He couldn't help it, but his heart sank a little. She still wouldn't let him in. Your secret's safe with me. I just can't believe that you... Adrian is... Cat Noir? Yeah. Does that change? I mean, do you still like me? Or I understand if you are disappointed. She held her finger to his lips again, catching his words inside. It changes nothing. I like you, she chuckled. <laughs> I love you. I'm just trying to get used to it, that you are Kitty. So when you came round as Cat... Wait, did she just say she loves me? Marinette loves me? Ladybug loves me? Knowing I'm cat? She loves me. Paying me visits for months. Talking? Hanging out? The first message on the tree? The CD? White Christmas? That was all you. The list broke him out of the merry-go-round of thoughts happening inside his head, as he noticed her fingers were now brushing across his lips as she edged closer. He nodded. That was all he could do. As his hand reached up and cupped her face, she leaned into his touch, closing her eyes. Was this the moment he told her? He knew she was Ladybug, but then would she only think now he only liked Marinette because... Or maybe one revelation was enough for now. Why? Her fingers slipped from his lips down to his chin and neck. Why? Why did you come round as Kitty and not talk to me like that as Adrian? Her voice exposing a sense of confusion with a hint of pain. If he was honest with himself, he didn't really know why. It just kind of happened. The first time I came round, I was feeling low. And I noticed you on your balcony. We talked differently from how we... You were at school. We weren't... A fumbling mess, you mean? She raised her eyebrows and shrugged her shoulders. I wouldn't use those words. Maybe adorable awkward? She chuckled. But as cat, I got a different marinette. Seeing both sides of you, I developed feelings. For you, I could no longer hide. But I never thought you liked either side of me, apart from being my friend. Oh, how wrong you were. She cast her eyes down and rolled her lips back and forth. She leant back. I felt torn between my feelings for Adrian and Kat, especially the more I spent with both of you.
but really you are one and the same. Sorry, I'm just getting used to the idea. Please, don't apologise. It's, it's a lot. I know. Take your time. Do you still want to? Yes! She took the blue hat from his hand and placed it on its head before stepping out of his hold, looking flustered. There! Perfect! Shall we go out and get um, started on this project? As long as there is time for snowmen and snow angels. Her eyes lit up at the realisation and smiled in return. He knew Marinette well enough by now to tell when she needed to take a step back and process the information in front of her. That he could give her and use the day to display both sides of himself. If he can get her to see Adrian as Kitty, then maybe they could take the next step. After all, she said, I love you. And he would find the right moment to tell her how much he loved her too. She moved towards the stairs, leading back to the living room, holding out her hand. Maybe his wish could come true. All I want for Christmas is... Part 7. A Silly Kitty. Adrian's POV. He couldn't help grinning at the blush fixed constantly across her cheeks as she kept glancing down at their held hands. Wisps of the air floated out in front of them, revealing how cold it was, but for Adrian, it could be a hot summer's day for the warmth he felt inside of him. So, what's the plan, Adrian? What do you need for this project? I still haven't seen the designs. Oh, yeah! Adrian came to the sudden stop, grabbing for his bag, causing Marinette to stumble on a lip in the snow and crashed into him. He spun around, wrapping his arms around her, placing them both off balance as he slipped on a smooth patch. With a thud, they hit the freshly powdered snow, his hand cradling her head against his chest. Embarrassed and yet happy to hold her so close, he took in the moment of feeling the weight of her on him, their hearts pounding together. Marinette let out a light giggle as she wiggled out of his grasp, muttering, I'm sorry, I'm... No, that was my fault. I was the one who... He caught sight of her ocean eyes glancing up at him. They were close enough. He could close the gap, lean in and... She continued to wiggle, placing her hands out and pushed away. If you wanted to make snow angels first, you could have just said... She said, trying to make light of the awkward situation as she straightened her jacket and purse. What? You mean like this? He gave her a smirk and waved his arms and legs out, up and down, side to side, brushing the snow into small mounds. His heart skipped a beat as she burst out laughing. <laughs> Silly kitty! A huge grin spread across his lips. She had seen his cat side without a mask. This was working. She continued to laugh as she lowered herself down beside him and mirrored his actions. For the next five minutes, the pair of them chuckled, making exaggerated wings in the snow, not caring who should see them. Adrian jumped to his feet first and offered his hand out for Marinette. Taking it, she gave it a tight squeeze but held her eyes down as he brushed the snow out of her hair. Oh, how much he wanted to kiss her, to express the love he had for her, but... Was she ready to hear it yet? Instead, he leaned in and kissed her softly on her forehead. His warm lips lingered against her cold skin, breathing in the smell of snow, blended in with vanilla, sugar and a hint of Christmas spice. If only he could bottle this smell, to have a constant reminder of this moment. Reluctantly, he pulled back and saw her gaze up at him through her lashes and a smile that made her eyes sparkle. A surge of confidence filled his heart and convinced his mind. Marinette, I will give you all the time you need to get used to the idea of my other side, but I want to tell you, I need to tell you, I love you with all my heart. There is no one 
but you. Her lips stopped him from continuing, taking him by surprise with her gentle kiss. She paused, face red with a wide smile. He wrapped his arms around her waist as she brushed back his fringe against his hat, staring into his green eyes, studying them closely as if searching for something. Hello, Kitty. My princess, he muttered, leaning in and kissed her back. A sense of dizziness washed over him as his heart hammered in his chest and pulled back breathlessly. Her body did a little shudder against the cold in his arms, a signal they needed to keep moving and possibly find a cafe to get a warm drink after laying in the snow. Would you like to get a hot chocolate? Warm ourselves up and I can finally show you what I had planned? Yeah, sounds good to me. I know a place nearby. Hand in hand, she guided him along a couple of streets until they saw a small bistro with only a few customers inside. You grab us a table and I will get us the drinks. Would you like anything to eat? He glanced at his watch. It was still too early for lunch, but he had missed breakfast with all the excitement of the day. Can I have a peppermint hot chocolate? Oh, and a chocolate chip cookie, please? He caught her glancing down at her purse as she made her way over to the table in the window. He couldn't help thinking if some of the cookie was for Tiki. Plag had referred to Marinette's Kwame as sugar cube, suggesting she liked sugar as much as his obsession over cheese, if that was possible. He chuckled at the thought until another took its place. Now that she knew he was Cat, he needed to confess to her about knowing her secret. But how and when? Adrian ordered himself a gingerbread latte and a croissant whilst ordering marinettes. As he made his way back over to the table, he watched her folding the paper napkin into some form of shape while staring out the window, lost in thought. Penny for your thoughts? Oh, I don't know if they're worth a penny. I was just watching the snow, that's all. She tucked a stray piece of hair behind her ear and glanced down at a small creation in her hands. He knew her well enough by now when she was holding something back, but this was all new to both of them and didn't want to push. When she was ready, she would let him in fully, he hoped. So, can I see this much-awaited design of yours? Now that you put it like that, he said, reaching into his bag and pulled out a small sketchbook. I'm not a designer like you or a talented artist, so you have to bear with me. Adrian, don't be so hard on yourself. She pulled the open book towards her and studied the images. This is what you had in mind? Wow, it's fantastic and so different. It is a tree made of wire? It is fixed to a stone for a base. Yeah, I had the idea from the tree you designed for Thankful Day. You sure? You like it? Honestly, I do. I'm not saying it because... She flickered her eyes up and blushed a little before darting them back down, tracing her fingers along the branches of the design. Are those flowers? Yeah, I was thinking gems or beads along the wire. That's a great idea. I was thinking, I saw some wire at Louis's place when we got the base for the tree. We could use that. How big were you thinking it would be? Adrian measured out his hands in front of him, almost knocking into the server bringing their food order. So sorry! He gestured to take it from the guy and gave a half smile of sorry again. I think... She took a sip of the hot chocolate and swirled the candy cane around. If you made it a little smaller, you could make it out of haberdashery wire and get a finer detail to it. I know I promised to take you back there, she smiled at the slight look of disappointment on his face. And I will, but for this, I think you can get all you need from the craft shop. I can take you to see Louis in the new year and we can work on another project together. Yeah. I'd like that. 
He smiled whilst tearing off a piece of the puff pastry, causing crumbs to cascade around him like falling snow. She laughed. Good. It's a date. They finished their snacks whilst discussing the finer details of the design and coming up with the next stages of the plan. Marinette's usual craft shop was a short walk from the bistro, but Adrian would have been happy to walk for miles for the chance to stroll with his princess through the snow, holding her hand. Marinette greeted the owner behind the counter of the shop like they were old friends, and handed him a basket. I made a list for all the things you might need. It should all be here. If not, I can ask Val to order it for you, and normally it only takes a few days to arrive. Great. Thank you again, Adrian. Again was that look, her ladybug look, that told him he didn't need to keep thanking her. He wondered if she knew the look she was giving him was the same. She stepped closer to him and whispered, there is nothing I wouldn't do for the one I love, and kissed him softly on the cheek. He knew he had turned bright red, pulling at his scarf as if he needed to breathe, and it was at its fault. Uh, yeah, me love nothing, you too. Oh, smooth the grass, there goes your ability to speak again. She rolled her lips in an attempt to hold back a chuckle. Why don't we start with the wire? It's over here. They spent the next hour filling up the basket as they wandered back and forth through the shop. Whilst Marinette was grabbing something else she needed for a project of her own, Adrian selected additional items to place on the tree as surprises and paid for everything, refusing her protest to pay him back for her items. At least let me repay you with a late lunch as we get started. If you have time, that is, she gestured to the door as they stood outside the bakery. Yeah! I should have a couple more hours before I need to sneak back in and my father returns. He pulled out his phone from his pocket and was happy to see no messages or missed calls. Adrian, she leaned in closer, you snuck out. Won't you be missed? What if they get worried and look for you? A bug of being a... He wiggled his eyebrows at her. How else do you think I could come? Anyway, I've had enough practice now at it. But generally, I'm never missed. He couldn't help dropping his tone at the last part and felt her give his hand a squeeze. Shall we? He gave her a reassured smile. They made their way up the stairs towards the empty apartment and saw two plates with handmade sandwiches sitting on the counter, waiting for them. The same homey warmth he had felt that night he had come round to watch White Christmas resurfaced as he imagined Sabine taking care to make her daughter and her friend food, made with love. His own words of not being missed came back to haunt him, as part of him wished he had someone back home to leave such gestures instead of empty dining rooms and food prepared by a chef, not a mother or a father. Is everything all right? Marinette smiled at him, pulling him out of the depressing thoughts. He nodded. Can you take all this up to my room and I will grab the lunch? What would you like to drink? Can I get a glass of milk? You really are a cat, aren't you? He shrugged his shoulders and threw her a smirk before ascending the stairs. She followed behind him with a tray in hand and placed it on the coffee table. He noticed a large piece of camembert on the side of his plate and smiled. She moved to a computer and placed on a song that he remembered from his childhood. She knelt down beside him and answered the question that must have been on his face. It is number seven on the album I gave you? The Christmas song. She looked at him, smiling, shaking her head. I still can't believe that is you. I mean, I do now. It's starting to sing in and make sense, but all those times those moments we shared together the things I told you but I'm glad I did tell Kitty that is for I don't think I could have as Adrian that must sound strange she covered her face with her hands I get it I really do I wanted to tell you but that I was cat you're Kitty but I couldn't, and yet 
I wanted to see you and spend time with you, share those special moments with you, fall in love with you. He encouraged one of her hands away and saw a nervous expression. What is it? There is something I need to tell you and I wasn't sure how to, especially now that I know you were Kitty, but I don't know but I don't want it to change what we have or how you feel about me. He encouraged the other hand down and interlaced his fingers around hers. Because it might. I mean, how I've treated you in the past. Know, know that I love both sides of you. But if I... But I get it if... He softly kissed her on the lips, taking her by surprise. Bugaboo? I know. Her eyes widened. But How? When? I had my suspicions, but never concrete. The night you gave me the CD, and I was helping to look for it, I found a page from the grimoire. Plague tried his hardest to convince me otherwise, but I saw the signs I was blinded to before. Like you said, it all made sense. I wasn't sure I was going to tell you, I knew, and then I messed up revealing my own identity. It looks like I'm the one who messed up first. She lowered her eyes. He reached out and cupped her face, stroking his thumb against her jawline. But finding out my princess is also my lady? How I fell in love with you twice? I could only hope that you had fallen in love with me the once. He breathed, leaning his forehead against hers. I tried to convince myself that I wasn't falling in love with Kat. That I only had space in my heart for Adrian. You. And yet, the more I spent time with you as Marinette, I got to see a different side of my kitty. A softer side and wasn't trying so hard to impress me but rather be himself. She pulled back a little, locking onto his eyes. I love you, Adrian, my kitty. His heart overflowed with love for his lady in front of him. She told him, she let him in. Gently, he kissed her and felt her kissing him back. I love you, Marinette. They relaxed into a cuddle, saying all they wanted to say without the need for words until it was time for him to leave. The next few weeks passed in a rosy haze, still not able to believe his luck. Surprising everyone except Alia, apparently she knew it was a matter of time that they were a couple on the Monday morning at school, meant he could finally express how much Marinette meant to him. It took a couple of Akuma fights to get used to the new dynamics of their relationship, but now it was stronger than ever, knowing they held no secrets between the two of them. When he didn't have school or sneaking out and visiting Marinette as her kitty, Adrian worked on his project, making sure it was ready in time. He hand-painted the stone the tree was anchored onto, as he also chased Plague around his room, who threatened to pour paint the white sofa in exchange for his own selected cheesy Christmas present. To him, it was only fair. Cutting himself three times on the wire as he twisted it into shape before Marinette gifted him a pair of extra thick crafting gloves designed for this kind of work and a pair of pliers she had presumed he knew he needed. He designed and ordered extra items from a local jeweler's, adding that special touch and refused to answer any of Marinette's searching questions. Before he knew it, Christmas Eve had arrived and he had a movie date with his girlfriend. He carefully wrapped his gift up and placed it into a box tied with a ribbon. This evening, he had convinced Natalie for the time to spend with his friends as his Christmas treat, unwilling to tell his father yet of his relationship with Marinette, fearful of what he might do or say to jeopardise it. 
that would be a challenge he would take on in the new year. Right now, he wanted to remain in the rosy haze of love. Marinette opened the bakery door, looking cute as a button in a Christmas jumper with snowflakes in the shape of a paw print, hand-knitted by herself, of course, and whilst wearing reindeer antlers on her head that jingled as she moved. Merry Christmas, my love! She whispered, gesturing him inside, away from watching eyes, as his bodyguard before their usual hello kiss. He couldn't help but grin at the thought of kissing Marinette, his love as natural and second nature. As he was about to pull away, he felt her place a hat on his head and let out a cheeky laugh between the lips, which made his heart sing. My love, what? I made it for you. To go with your other gift? I'm glad to see you wearing. She smiled down at his own Christmas jumper she had presented to him the day before. She had designed it with the image of a snow cat with a ladybug perched on the top of his head. I love it. Thank you. Speaking of gifts, he teased the box out in front of him. Oh, I'm excited. Yours is under the tree. Wait, Marinette. I thought, he gestured to the jumper, you didn't need to. Silly kitty, the jumpers are to celebrate our first Christmas together. It's not your present. Plus, you know how much I enjoy making you things. She gave his blue scarf a playful tug, suddenly feeling nervous about his own gift, not sure if it could measure up to what she had already given him. He gripped tightly onto the box as they climbed the stairs. Inside the apartment was a welcoming scent of mulled spices from the cider on the stove and the warm glow of candles dotted around the room as the tree lights sparkled. Treats of mostly cheese and cookies lay on the coffee table and the film The Grinch on pause. My mum and papa are out visiting friends this evening so I thought we could watch the film down here, if that's okay with you. She gestured her arms wide at her effort to make it a magical Christmas date. Sounds perfect to me, princess. He took in all the details she had added in, knowing he would remember this night in decades to come. Marinette, this is wonderful. If this was my gift alone, it would be more than enough. But it's not, so take a seat, please. She said with a wink. Can I request to go first? Feeling the nervous bubbles inside of him, she nodded and sat down next to him, grinning at the box he placed into her hands. Merry Christmas, my love. As she opened the lid, her eyes widened in awe. She lifted it out as the tiny gems on the tree glistened against the candlelight. Her fingers delicately touched each of the dangling charms he had woven into the tree to make it look like they were hanging from the branches. Each one was made to remember all the moments we have shared together as both sides of us. I have also made it so that we can add more in time to come as we spend our lives together. The gems are rose quartz for love and, well, roses. Adrian, this is amazing. I was kind of hoping it was from me. She gave him a playful smile. But this? The amount of love and effort you have put into it? Means more than you could ever know. He leaned in and stroked away a tear which had trickled down her cheek. You mean the world to me. And you made my Christmas wish come true. All I wanted for Christmas, Marinette, was you. Thank you for listening to the final part of All I Wanted for Christmas.